helps if I unmute the mic. How are you guys doing today? And uh, thanks, AB Mock, for, for following. That's awesome. I do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, today we're going to build a clue board. It should be really, really, really cool. I haven't uh, actually built a clue board before, of all the things. I um, received this customer's board. I don't know if he's going to be in the stream today or not. I guess that's always, uh, you know, you never know. He was, of course, invited. And if you're in here right now, feel free to shout out and say who you are. Participate. Um, anyway, yeah, without too much further ado, I'm actually going to pull the board out. We can take a look at it. So, clue board is actually pretty cool. It ships in a box that just fits this. I don't know, I was kind of interested in how people package, right? And last week we did that, or the weekend, we did that Rama. And of course the packaging on that is crazy fantastic as far as I can tell. Anyway, um, so there, or there, probably better, right? Comes in a nice sealed package with the PCB comes with a manual. I mean, how many kits come with a manual, right? Can't beat that. Wait, what? I'm waiting. No. <laughs> really sad to say that they bragged about, oh yeah, I agree. I need my lead too. But I mean, it's okay for them to be real host compliant, you know, with their, with their SMD components. But I need my lead in my soldering, too. Lead-free solder sucks. It's the worst. But, how many keyboards come with a manual? I'd love if customs... No, I, I don't expect anybody to do that. Especially since most of them are made in China or shipped from Korea. Uh, probably the English might not be so pretty, depending on who made it. But yeah, I mean, it shows all the layouts and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, then, of course, we're using some 62 gram Zelio V2s today, which should be awesome. Yeah, not anymore. It's not going to be lead free anymore. And then they ship in the, you know, cool, like, little bubble mailer thing. I don't usually do any kind of an unboxing or anything like that for these, but after. After the Rama board, I was like, yeah, curious about how people make their, uh, how people do their packaging. Kind of want it to be awesome all around. And this is actually very, very good. Honestly, I mean, even KBD fans, right? They put them in like a little box that's foam lined on all the sides. Um, I ordered that one, that Blue Alps case that I have that Blue Alps board that I have that has the Taihao um, Dolch caps and the AliExpress case. Even that AliExpress case came in like a decently padded case, but yeah. So I got this acrylic diffuser deal here. I don't know if it's, it's probably harder to see there. Anyway, yeah, I mean, you know, it's good. It's good. Er yeah, let's get that focus going. Anyway. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And then the customer. So today we're not going to have anybody. <laughs> what did you say? Uh, are you actually tossing in 62 gram Zelios into a meme board? Let's toss some real meme switches into there. Yeah. Um, so this is for a customer. And the customer... Um, he wanted the clue board and actually it's pretty nice I, it's nicer than I expected it to be and the funny thing is I've seen them and held them before but I never really I don't know like at meetups I never really gave it a whole lot of attention it's actually pretty nice the finish is decent everything about it's kind of kind of nice I mean it's not you know it's not like a crazy custom or anything it's just it's nice the price isn't there either like crazy custom price either so the value is higher anyway um we'll uh 
we'll uh, take this over to the soldering station and, and get set up so that we can actually, um, you know, start a build. No, this is now the second time I've done this with my face cam being all bright and blown out. Sorry, second time in a row, in fact. Okay, cool, good, good enough, we're fixed. So the case is absolutely metal. It's uh, it's not, it's not super thick aluminum like some customs. Um, and actually, for the price, I mean, there are slightly better deals if you're not looking for 66. Like this is a KBD fans five degree um, with orange Alps, um, and I, it weighs more. I don't know if it weighs more then this clue board will weigh, but I think it probably does. So we'll, we'll literally weigh it, see what we get. And I'll let you know how sturdy it is or how stout it is. So one pound, 9.2 ounces for just this case. I'm not gonna weigh this. I'm not gonna take it apart to weigh it, but two pounds, 13 ounces, right? So this is, it does have a brass plate, though. Um, it's a little heavier, I think. <laughs> yeah, so the case is absolutely aluminum with an acrylic diffuser in the middle for the, you know, for that RGB underglow. I think it's gonna turn out okay. In fact, I think it's gonna turn out fantastic. So I'll uh, pull those other parts over here and we can get started testing the PCB. Uh, oh, we're using, uh, we're using Zeal stabs today. The best, only the best. I am up. Amazing. Love them. I don't know how anybody else feels about it, but I'm a big fan of his stabs. Yeah, I think uh, I think Underglow is a little overrated personally. Um, I think most of the community probably doesn't love it that much, but I will say that that tofu acrylic that we did also over the weekend, right? Yeah, was pretty fantastic IMO. I really, really liked it. I was surprised at how much I liked it. The whole, the whole, the whole way from the moment I received it right up until, um, right up until it was built and done. So yeah, so we don't really need this right now. Although before we do anything, I'm gonna put the bump ons on because you know, prevent scratches and such. Get some some bump on action. I'd be real mad if it were mine and whoever was building it for me didn't instantly instantly throw these on. Hey, what up man? It's a TSC. Oh, tiny shiny crumb. <laughs> I love it. You guys have nicknames for each other now. That's the best. I'm gonna call. No, I'm not gonna call you guys that. I might call Booby Bep BBB. I don't know. It rolls off the tongue real, real well. TSC. I don't know. Maybe.
I kind of like it. Okay, so that's a little weird. They don't line up 100% the hole. I mean, it went in seated on this side, but if you look, there's a little tiny gap. It's almost like the bump on was cut on some kind of a jig that wasn't 100% square. Like the, the base where the adhesive sticky is does fit in, but there's like small gaps and then the top is aligned a little differently. I don't know what that's all about. I'm guessing, like I said, it's cut on a jig or in a stack or something where it wasn't like 100% even when whatever cut through them did its, did its work. That one wants to hang off just a little bit. It's okay. We will get it seated perfectly. As perfectly as we can. Ooh. Okay. I see what just happened. So, actually, some of these are thinner than the others. That's what just happened. So we're going to pull this thicker one off over here. Hopefully not ruin it. Totally did. Well, not totally, but it peeled some of the adhesive sticky off. That's weird, they sent different height ones. Actually, the adhesive sticky is not on these very well because it wants to peel off with the sticker backing. That's not good. That's okay. I have extra, extra bump-ons around if I need to. Though, we should have all of the bump-ons we need in just these four. So these ones are a little bit shorter than the back ones, which I guess increases the angle just a tiny little bit. It's a pretty shallow angle, so that's all right. Not all feet are created equal. You are correct. <laughs> all right. So yeah. So uh, what have you guys been up to? You guys gotten anything cool in the mail? I got something really exciting in the mail that, uh, that I'll show you guys in just a little bit when we start doing some of our work. When we, when we start tuning steps. Here, I'll give you one neato, neato little thing that I, that I received. Got some of these nutcrackers. So that's one thing. That's not what I was talking about before, but got both the, the box switch kind and the uh, MX switch kind. Like I need more, more types of tools to open, to open switches. Um, I guess I kind of have like basically all of the ones that I'm aware of. No, uh, maybe not. I'm a, I'm probably missing something, right? But I have all the main solutions for it. <laughs> you got the. In Terabang, pretty cool. You got the salty keycaps? Oh, sweet. That's awesome. I kind of thought about, well, I mean, they're really cool. I thought about them too, but I don't think I thought too seriously about them because as cool as they are, there's like so many buys that you can join right now and could have joined in really the last year, this whole last year, although right now is absolutely bananas. I think I'm saving up. I'm not saving up. I think what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to join in on the um, key cult number two. I think I'm going to try to get a stainless one. Yeah, 
You know, the funny thing is, is I find myself using the key boss the most. I actually like the base being so long. Gives me the right amount of, like, part to hold on to. And the box part of this, like even opening this occasionally, if your hands aren't kind of dry. So the right way I think to open these is to use your fingernail to split the the uh, keychain adapter holder because these are super sharp and they don't actually cut my hands, but they hurt every time I accidentally slip onto them. You got them for friends and stuff. Like you're gonna give out your your salty keycaps. I mean, okay, you know, you do you. So, customer did not go super in depth on what layout we're doing, but that's okay. Because pretty general layout, I think is what he wants anyway, based on what I know of him, what he's explained. So obviously we're gonna do the 2.25. Um, I don't know if we're gonna do stepped or not stepped, uh, the keycap set that he got does, I think, have a stepped. I don't know. I have a set of it. I just don't remember because I don't use it much. Um, we're going to do that 225 uh, right shift, 225 left shift, like I said. No split backspace unless he comes in here and tells me otherwise. 625 space bar. And I think we're going to do the 1U the one you mod cap on the right side, not the left side. That's what I would do. Um, and that'll be his function. Anyway, the rest of it's pretty straightforward. So you're probably wondering what keycap set this guy got because, or, or girl. Hey, thanks for cheering. Thank you so much for the bits, tiny shiny crumb. You guys are kind of awesome. Last, last stream was awesome too. I liked all the bits. Thank you guys, seriously. Never expected, but awesome to receive. Um, so anyway, um, I don't know where I was. It's important to thank you guys for that. But where was I? Mm, we're going to use green today. Um, yeah, so his keycaps. He got a relatively inexpensive, but... Um, in my opinion, underrated set. I actually like this set. Um, for, well, I don't know. I like XDA just fine. I think XDA, XDA is trashed a little bit sometimes. People talk smack about it, but it's actually pretty nice. So it does have the step caps. Um, I don't know, the texture's a little, uh, hey, how's it going? How's it going, man? Good to see you. Yeah, so the texture's somewhat gritty, but, and then it's like a super flat, um, a super flat profile on top, but with, in my opinion, just enough sculpt to be good. And if you don't know, you know, like what you want, I think it's 50 bucks, a keycap set, so it's kind of, no, I'm not cutting something that doesn't need to be cut, right? Okay, good, it is sealed. Um, so I think it's actually a good thing. Sweet. So obviously, this is a brand new PCB. So we're gonna test that real quick. Oh, they have the really small SMD LEDs. The really itty bitty ones. Man, I'm so happy that I did not SMD solder those on. <laughs> hey man, thanks for um really you found me off my Reddit post. I guess I need to post on probably MechKey's subreddit that I do these. I, I need to be better about advertising the stream. Um, I think I pretty much just started it for fun, you know? Um, but honestly, I'm really be I've really come to like my Wednesday evening uh, stream sessions with all of you guys. It's really, really good. Thank you guys for 
coming by and watching them. So what, I guess, here's my question, if you've just been watching VODs, what's, uh, what's your favorite board that I've built that you've seen on stream anyway? While I get this started, get some tweezers out and start testing it. I mean, I built some cool boards on stream, I think. Some of them. Some of them are pretty cool. I think all of them, honestly. Like, I don't really take boards that I think are uninteresting as builds. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would build something. So all the LEDs work, which is good. They're really bright. <clears throat> I think it was the DZ60, oh, so the acrylic tofu. Yeah, that's, uh, honestly, that was a great board. That's probably the most, it's the most surprising, surprisingly good board. Um, like, it's, when I ordered it for the customer, I think, I had the lowest expectations of it and was therefore most surprised when it actually was great. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's KBD fans, so I didn't expect it to be terrible quality, but up to that point, the only experience, not the only, actually, up to that point, not up to that point, right, okay. So I think what I wanna say is, I have had, I think, isolated incidents of QC issues with boards that I ordered through them, with one board that I ordered through them, and they took care of it exactly the way I would have wanted them to. But, you know, anytime you get a QC problem with somebody, you're like, oh, come on, you know, is it gonna be a problem? Are these guys just not caring or do they have low quality stuff? I mean, I've ordered a ton of stuff through them, but like personal board, one of the earlier ones that I got was that, um, it's somewhere over there, um, was the, the Tofu Hot Swap, which actually I had posted on Mech Market to get rid of it. <laughs> um, because I never use it, but the, Whatever, one one piece of it, the thread's running in. You guys have heard me talk about this before, but you know, it, it totally makes you think like, oh, am I gonna have to, uh, am I gonna have problems with these guys or whatever in the future? And the, the answer is no. Like everything else that I've seen of theirs worked out really well. And actually I recommend them to people because the value is so high on their stuff. Way is the way. Um, yeah, man, absolutely. You know, have me, um, yeah, hit me up. I'm interested in building more boards. Like, I'm not planning on stopping this anytime soon. And I just recently posted, right? I mean, that's obviously where you found me, but. Uh, dirt, dirt, dirt. Here? Yes, yeah, here. Um, so, obviously, I'm interested in building more. Um, I actually had kind of a hefty backlog because I went on vacation and built and went on vacation again. And this weekend, building two boards unexpectedly has totally solved any backlog that I had. And I think, honestly, if I get a lot more builds, I'm, I'm just going to plan on doing it that way. That's how I'll take care of any backlogs that show up. add weekend builds in instead of just my Wednesdays. I may even decide to take more builds to do that. So that's gotta be the function. Yeah, okay, we already tested these. Derp, derp, derp. Anyway. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I have not seen the Mr. Robot inspired build on Hackaday. Uh, that is not a link. It looks like a link. <laughs> it is not. 
There we go. The F Society keyboard, nice. Wow. What is this? I mean, I don't really need all those RSGs and Bs shining through the top, but nor do I really want the clear keycaps, but that picture with the girl holding it up on the side with the blue ribbon, that's cool. That's a nice picture. Some post vignetting going on. That's cool. Anyway. Thank you for showing me that. That's really awesome. I like the, yeah, I like those sticks too. Um, yeah, I probably wouldn't have put those on there. I probably would have put some OG, like cherry dice subs or something on it um, if I were building it. However, I didn't, so, you know, it's not my vision. And I probably wouldn't build a board, uh, wouldn't build that unless somebody commissioned it or something anyway. Speaking of clue boards, I think this has a... Does this have a clipboard PCB in it? I think it does. Not like... Clue board, uh, not clue board, um, a desk candy PCB. Desk candy? Mm, now I'm all confused. I'd have to look at it again. Anyway, uh, this is like my favorite board to never use, by the way. Like anybody who's watched my VODs or watched my streams kind of knows that like 60% is my least usable. I need arrows and like these two, like this is 66 or 65, like, you know, the 68 key where it's got the whole column here, butted up against the mod row or the mod column. That or this is like the minimalist for me personally, mostly because I need those arrows. I use arrows all the time, like grabbing shift and then arrow keys all the time is totally, I select and move a bunch of text all the time. I need it. So this is my favorite keyboard to never use with lubed Alps oranges. It's a great board. What's up Petrov? Good evening, man. How you doing? We are building a clue board. Whoops. You know, one of those. Uh, 60% seven use space, best. Uh, I agree if you have the wind keyless blockers. I agree. Totally agree. Though, the person who commissioned this board did, definitely did not say, I want a seven use space. So, we're gonna build them as standard layout. And I, when I build quotes for people, it actually has a, a thing in there. Like if you don't specify a layout, I'm gonna do a standard ANSI layout. So, you know, that's that. Nice, man. What are you cooking? What are you cooking? I have not eaten dinner, so <laughs> I'm gonna eat a little bit after this. So get me salivating, man. Tell me all about it. It's all about the 97 u space. Sure, 975U space, yeah. It is, but probably not trying to do something like that on here. I mean, it's obviously not compatible, but definitely not trying. All right, so we're done with this. Um, we're gonna get some stabilizers going. Uh, you know what, I'll, I'll hold, I was gonna show you guys something, and I will, but I'm not there yet still. Still not there. Um, so we're gonna get these switches out and make sure that we got our you know our spacing correct as per usual. Like we do. Uh, what Alps are ooh, do I plan? Do I plan with the customer too, or do they have to know what they want before asking? Hold on, I wanna look at food and then I'll answer that question. Steak, salad, and plate with fresh pesto. Ooh. Red wine, organ pinot, and steak sauce. Sounds like a great dinner, man. 
It really, really does. Um, so, do I plan customers' builds too, or do they have to know what they want before asking? Um, I absolutely will. Like, so, I recently created a form for my most recent post, and it kind of has like three real options for what you want to do. Three, this many. Um, pasta, okay, there you go. That's okay, I was like, plate with fresh pesto just by itself, okay. I mean, I like pesto, maybe it's going on the steak. Um, pasta with pesto, good. That's actually really awesome then. Now I'm hungry, thanks. No, seriously, thanks, it sounds great. Um, so I will, I will build uh, customer boards if they come to me with a kit and they just know exactly what they want and they're just ready to roll, which obviously is in a way really optimal for me, right? I mean, it's just like, I want you to do this thing, I want this layout, I want all these, but almost no one comes and knows exactly what they want. And even if they do have a kit, they still need help being guided through the process, my process, right? So. I tell them the things that I need, and I ask a lot of questions before we get to building a quote for them. I'm gonna start actually working while we're talking because I have a tendency to let this thing drag on, or not drag on, but you know, I like taking my time with it. It's fun for me, so I'm not trying to rush. Plus, bad things happen sometimes when you rush. So, Band-Aid mods. You know what, real quick, before I do this, I'm gonna pull up my quote doc, which I did look at earlier. But just to make sure that we didn't encapsulate. So this is kind of part of my process, right? So I build the quote doc and it actually has all the specifics called out in there, like things that we wanna do. Um, yeah. So up until very recently, default was just, I'm gonna do Band-Aid mods unless you tell me not to. Um, so that was the case when I took this build, but now I'm doing the opposite. It seems like a lot of people are not interested, but so I'm asking and asking and asking more, hey, do you want these? Um, so my new default is not, not gonna be that, but that wasn't the case with this guy and the post that he looked at. So we are doing them. Unless he steps in here and says no. Um, anyway, I'll ask a bunch of questions from a customer's build, and I'll get them to a point where we've isolated all the things they want. And so if you already have a kit, that process is gonna be super straightforward. If you have a good idea of what you want, like this customer, for instance, I don't wanna call him out too badly or anything. It's not calling him out, but I don't wanna give away too many details about them. The customers but um, he came to me and he knew he wanted a clue board he knew he wanted a clue board but all the other options were unknown he didn't know exactly what he wanted right so we're not going to use these kinds we're going to use this kind um, so he didn't know and yeah feel free to fill out the form yeah, but so he, he didn't know all the other options that he wanted. He wanted suggestions. And so I absolutely gave him suggestions. And I'll do that for customers that want that. And then there are some customers that are totally new to the scene, don't know anything about the options that are available to them. Um, sometimes they don't know what kind of, what layouts they're interested in even. And that's okay too. Right, so I will help walk those customers through. And a lot of times people that are in that boat, they it's not only that they don't know what they want, they don't know where they're starting, right? So I look at customers that approach me in that way as though it's, it's not going to be a build that I'm gonna accomplish, but they're just looking for help figuring out what parts they want. Um, that one is not gonna be used. So I look at it that way. Um, I treat them just as professionally as I would any customer, but I look at it as though I'm gonna help them figure out what thing it is they want, and when they're ready, they'll come to me and ask if they want a build, and usually that's the way it works out. And uh, yeah, that's kind of my process for customers that don't know what they want. 
I want them to feel comfortable and I do genuinely want people to have good good advice when it comes to building their first keyboard. So I absolutely will take those customers. I think that that's different for some other people that are doing keep streams. Some of them are targeting specific segments of the population. And I think that if I change, if I increase the number of streams that I want to do and want to take this thing, it's not that I don't take it seriously, but if I want it to become a more serious endeavor, like if I want to reach more people, which I may decide to do at some point, that will shift a little bit where I'll help people with advice, but where I'll only start taking certain types of builds. And don't get me wrong, I'm I'm somewhat choosy about it now. I, I have a certain percentage of customers that, or prospective customers that will come and say, hey, I have a such and such um, OEM board, right? And so we're gonna need one, two, three, four, five. So we need one more. Um, so I have a cert certain number of prospective customers that come to me and they're like, hey, I have some OEM board and I want it to have, I want it to have RGB underglow. And it's an opaque case, a purely opaque case. And so if you know exactly what you want, I would actually be willing to take something like that on. But if you're new to the community and your prize board is a race three or something like that, and you're like, oh, I wanted to have this functionality. I, that's an example, right? I'm, it's maybe not even a good example in this case, but I have this and I wanted to do a specific thing that it doesn't do. And you don't know really the context of, you're, you're not familiar with the context enough to know kind of what that entails, making it do something crazy that it never did before. Um, I, I, have, I have to warn those people that the sticker shock is going to be pretty extreme on something like that compared to the cost of the board, the original cost, right? Um, this gets, hold on, I gotta read this. Safety third, wait, what? There's a form, okay, yeah, request help with, yes. I'm here driving. <laughs> yes to Band-Aid, nice, nice. Um, be safe, be absolutely safe. That's absolutely critical. Um, the only real question I have for you, um, the only question is what bottom row layout you want. That's literally it. And knowing now is actually good, but I don't want you to crash. So ask me to repeat this if now is not a safe time for you to answer the question. However, I believe that a great option for you is for us to do a layout somewhat similar to this layout with a one U here, because you're gonna have three on this side and three on this side, and then you're gonna have your arrow keys. Three and three? Yes, three and three. So you can do all one, two, fives, but one of them has to be one, and I think you probably want it to be this one, and you probably want that to be your function key. The only other, I mean, you have other options. We could do seven U space here and 1.5, can we do 1.5? Yeah, 1.5 U, 1.5 U, so only two on this side. We could even do only two on this side. But I think what you probably want, based on what we talked about, is pretty much the standard ANSI layout, as standard as it gets on this kind of a board, except we'll do the one U function key here. Does that sound right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Ask me to repeat if it's not safe. Anyway, so safety first, not third. Um, next level drive skills, yes. I mean, I've done the LA traffic thing, drive with your knees for a while. Um, you're all good with building PCs. Hold on, trust me on that, sound good to me, cool. Yeah, that's your new build, that's absolutely what I'd do. 
Um, no, I, I don't think you're missing something amazing. A lot of people, including me, actually like um, like no Windows keys, like eliminate the Windows key altogether, which would be on, which would mean having two 1.5 views, a control and an alt, but no Windows key. Um, it's more more useful for games than I think what you're planning. Um, anyway. Good with building PCs, but keyboards are a whole different monster, which I'll happily pass the work off to building onto you. Thanks, man. I um, will gladly accept the work and we'll try to make the best possible board for you. Um, anyway, so we were going we were going over process, I think. So the process for people that want something crazy, but they're brand new. Um, I'm only really selective in those cases. Uh, or if it's something that's just boring to me, outright like if it's if it's something that i don't think is cool or i've handled the case a million times or i have one and i don't like it anyway i'd probably tell you like i really don't want to do that one or whatever i could be convinced because i do want people to have cool boards or boards that they think are cool but there's a i don't know i guess if you were like hey i want this um i want this plastic tray mount 60 generic um i probably wouldn't do it if i did take it it definitely wouldn't be to stream i'd probably uh you know charge my normal fee but like if i build it on an off day sometime it's it's not that exciting i don't think a lot of people want to watch that kind of a thing this is cool a lot of you know even newbie builds are really cool sometimes just not the same thing. I don't want to do the same thing over and over again, basically. That makes this not fun for me. This kind of thing is fun for me. I've seen clue boards. I've held them. I know that the quality isn't bad, but I've not dealt with a clue board exactly. Like, there's specific board. Um, I know it's worthy. I know it's a worthy board. However... Okay, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to put one of these up here so we can look at the overlap and see that our tab overlap matches with the 125. Uh, actually, I have the layout dock right here. I don't even, I just need to know, does it even support a 1U on the, on the edge? It doesn't. So this is the leftmost one, so that's 125. And then... It does support one U in the second row, so it's going to be the second one over. I think. I mean, it supports one five too. That's weird. Okay. Well, I guess that would be. Yeah. Whatever. Um, So the second one over here, two. Oh, you know what? Oh, they aren't called out there, but the space is called out. That's cool. Anyway, um, I'm just making sure I'm getting your layout right. Always test that bottom row and make sure that everything lines up right possible it's absolutely possible to have as many different switch types as you have switch positions on your board <laughs> like literally as many as as there are because there are that many different types of switches um yeah i'm talking about mx um there aren't that many types of alps there are a lot but there are not that many um, so probably you can get away with it with alps wasn't that tofu board set up for both types? Do you mean for Alps and... I'm confused. Did I miss something? Oh, Alp. Oh, you said Alp, not Dip. Okay, Alp. Um, yeah. I don't think the tofu board is Alps compatible. Um... This board is, though. 
right? So basically, the on Alps, here, I'll just pull one out, you can see. Maybe I'll pull one out? Yes. Here's a brown Alps. So on Alps, if you look real close at it, the Y axis of those pins is really close to each other, much closer than MX. So if I stick this Alps in here, right? You see it goes through right here, where my finger's pointing. It goes through the, the bottom and bottom, yes, through the bottom part of an enlarged hole on the higher y-axis one and the middle of the hole on the other. Whereas if we throw, if we throw this MX switch in there, you can see that it goes through other portions of those enlarged holes. Other portion of that enlarged hole, and then the other hole here. And sometimes you'll see that be one hole that's just elongated. Also, the MX switches have PCB mount legs that go through these side holes, and then the stem hole through the middle one. So they line up, and if they're, if they are the kind of switch that has these little legs, which I always recommend getting, by the way, always these, unless the plate for whatever your board is, is fixed and very tight, then you never have to worry about your keycaps being misaligned, for the most part, because, well, a little bit, but not very much, because they just then line up correctly. So highly recommend, highly recommend um, doing that. So we're gonna take our 6.25U space bar. And we are going to try that. Why would I do that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is where you go. All right, take our, not in here. A 1.25U. So I'm doing this so that I make sure 100% that I get the out or the stabilizers lined up, unless it's labeled, which it is not, and I'm good with that. I think I know where they are, but I always check because you know I've been wrong once before or twice. Not it's not that big of a deal, but you know. I don't, I definitely am not gonna let it get to a customer that way, so always double check. <laughs> I reverse the control and all, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're all one, two, fives. So there we go, like I thought. And then, This other one going. Okay. I'm going to do a one year. I mean, I don't really actually need to do this now, so I'm not going to actually. It's silly. I'm just burning time if I do that. I just wanted to get this right. Um, depends on PCB. Yeah, I mean, this plate doesn't support Alps, the built-in one. I, I don't know why they built it this way, but I know they did. I'm sure they intended on something else being compatible with it. Um, thinking of analog switches for WSD and Speed Silver for everything else. Um, 
analog switches. Can you... Am I missing something? I feel like maybe I'm being foolish by saying I don't know what you mean by analog switches. I mean... Technically analog. I mean, it's just on or off. So binary, but te technically analog? I mean, the circuitry that drives it is not analog at all. Do you mean like a r rotary? No, even those are digital on... What do you mean? Cherry MX style switches that are analog. Why am I not familiar with these? How am I not familiar with this, Boopy Beb? How? How? Okay, well... I'm fairly certain that the circuitry on most PCBs... Uh, yeah, actually like 100% certain. The analog mechanical keyboard. Analog input. That's real pretty. That is real pretty. But, I mean, this board supports this thing. So if you wanted this capability, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but you pretty much need this board. Wooting one. I mean, I'm not like 100% sure, but yeah, actually I'm 100% sure, man. This, this, there's no way a board like this um, or most 99% of board other than that one or something that was specifically designed for those is going to support that, like, based on the way this thing is wired. The correct, I mean, feel free to show me a board that does it and I'll build it. It's not fundamentally different. Um, however, very likely what will happen if it's an analog board is if I used those switches, um, the circuitry in here would detect the continuity there and would actually just press it like it was full pressed all the time because it's just digital on off on off. Yeah, I don't see it either. Yeah. Yeah, so unless you want that specific board, which you don't need me to build because it's hot swap, um, you're done, pretty much. That's pretty much what it does. You just buy it and it's KO. But if you want um, a different kind of, if you want a different kind of experience, like you want a specific kind of a case and stuff like that, I think you're, you're pretty much locked into the digital switches for now. Although that's really cool. And I think that, I think it's a little um, unlikely that our community would har harness that all the time, but I think, um, I'm sorry, man, I'm not trying to shatter your dreams. There's the one option for you, or, or however many options there are that support that thing. I'm just not aware of it in, in this community's reach for the most part. Don't drop that. Um, okay, day. So, outer and inner. I believe we are going right here. It would help if I put the, um, a guide in there. I don't know what I'm trying to do there. Just trying to make sure I know where it goes so I can put the the wire down correct correctly. Yeah, that's totally where that goes. So, outer and inner. Uh, 
Um, yeah, man, I'm really sorry. Don't mean to shatter your dreams. However, I think that's what just happened. My bad, man. My bad. I'll try and make up for it by building you an awesome board when you want one. <laughs> um, no, so honestly, the way to the way to handle that is um, contact me out of here. Hit me up on Reddit or hit me up on Discord. If you remind me at the end of this stream, I will absolutely point you to my Discord name or tag, and then we will um, we'll get in touch about it. Yep. So it's. Yeah, it's just the rightmost of all of them there. And then the rest of this is pretty straightforward. So, perfect. And now, we will get to putting band-aids down. Um, so, yeah, basically, basically, um, there's a million case options out there and all sorts of other stuff, and I will absolutely absolutely help uh, are... okay thought I missed something thought I missed the notification I was like oh no um, let me get these band-aids going there it is Um, I think that when we get to the base of what somebody wants, though, in my process, like, do they want underglow? Do they want backlight? Do they want, um, super premium, uh, case options? Do they want, do they have a specific cost target that they're aiming for? Because, you know, everybody has a price limit, and... It makes people uncomfortable sometimes to talk about it, um, but it's important, you know? I wanna hit people's target. I want them to get the best options in their budget or around their budget at least, right? It just isn't on the same wavelength as me yet. Uh, actually, I have a feeling that if we talked about, when I talk about that kind of thing with customers, it's easy to convince people why some of the premium options in our community are actually really good options. It's just they may not do a specific thing or have certain specific features that others want. And I totally get it. There are features that I want. There are. And they don't exist, and that's okay. They will, one day. And honestly, at that point, it's up to me, right? Like, if there's something that I really want, it isn't available when I get into this community, like I am, to, you know, then, then go have it made. Like, literally design it, have it produced. Perfect. Okay, so we are aligned up correctly. We got those mods, those are the hard ones to align because everything else on this is pretty much in the right spot already. Oh, um, the one other question that I had for you, uh, if you're still, if you're still, still watching, uh, tantrum do you want stepped caps lock key I'm gonna set them at the top of this thing so you can see what I'm talking about the differences between the two options as we are as we're going about our way if you want to look 
So on the right is non-stepped, on the left is stepped, and I actually think stepped is better overall. But your option because we're not at a point where that decision has to be made yet. Although I'm pretty sure something in there says by default I'd do that if no answer could be acquired. Um, okay, so what that brings me to, by the way, yeah, stepped is totally what's hip. Seems like this guy was working on something. I don't know how far he got. I'll look at it. Maybe. It's a Reddit post, so does it get crazy? Ooh, inductive sensors. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, there are some other cool, cool types. Stepped, yeah. Yeah, totally. Stepped is the way. Anyway, um, no, no, we'll apply those more. I'm excited to show you guys something that I got, though. And I'm kind of getting ahead of myself with it. So let me get these Band-Aid mods on. So, um, the analog thing actually does seem really cool to me. I don't know if it's a thing that I would really go about doing myself. I mean, there's only one option, right? Does this thing even support 275? No. Okay, good. Um, I think the analog thing is cool. I think rotary encoders are cool. Um, I think sliders are cool. If you have a really specific use case for them. Oh no, this is one of those ones. We had one of these last week with these band-aids. Weird. One of them delaminated. Like, the sticky thing stayed on the on the slicker portion. Weird. Weird. It's okay. We'll just leave this out. So we can cut replacements. No oh, no. Um Yeah, like I said though, I think that if I were going to focus on an area for keyboards, mechanical keys, keyboards, especially in our in our community to grow, it would be new materials or new manufacturing or increased production capability. Like so group buys weren't so limited sometimes, although I realize that has not so much to do sometimes with the manufacturing capabilities of a given group by runner or the people that are building the board for them but sometimes to do with the fact that it's a group by and there are limitations to how much volume someone can handle um, but for the manufacturing portion I think newer materials and new mounting methods are kind of where I would want to see the biggest increases. Oh, that's for ISO enter. I was like, what? what is that doing there? Forgot this board. Like most boards, supports that. Jack Static, dude, you're my, you're the guy. You're pushing that new materials things. Hey, oh man, how you doing? Yes. Seize the means of production, yes. You can always feel free to plug your group buys in my, uh, in my Twitch. Because, or interest checks, I guess. 
as of right now, right? Yes. He is not just the purveyor of plastic, he is the purveyor of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, which is some of my favorite plastic. For anybody who doesn't know, think about those thick plastic cutting boards, the really dense, heavy ones that stand up to like any level of abuse you really pretty much can throw at it. Like you cut that thing, cut on that thing with sharp knives forever. Super, super durable plastic. They make boats out of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene for river, for like skating up rivers that are like two or three inches of water deep in Alaska that just have rocks all over them and they just slide right over it. Make boats out of that stuff. They're real expensive, but they're real nice for that kind of thing. I mean, it's impressive to me. What what we make out of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, not just cutting boards. Things that are made for long term durable application. Day in, day out. Actually, let's get this one. And this man is planning on making not one, but two boards out of it. And one of them is gonna be an Alice. My lord, man, you're a monster. I hope it goes so well. Um. Climbing ropes if you turn it into a fiber, yeah. Strongest ropes are made of, yeah, Dyneema. True, true. I've climbed with Dyneema ropes before. I actually did not know that Dyneema was uh, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene though. I guess it's a material that I didn't give a lot of thought to. Which, irony of ironies, Cutting boards and boats, not a thing I've ever had my life rely on. I have looked at the loading capability of Dyneema ropes, I just didn't realize that's what material it was fibrous, um, fibrous ultra molecular weight polyethylene. Um, how hard is it to implement a joystick, like in the F Society? Okay, so if you find a PCB that is already made, or if you find a someone that will design one and make one for you, then it's not that not that um, hard, I guess. <laughs> Might be expensive because you'll have to have the PCB manufactured at whatever the minimum order quantity is. I'll tell you what, I think that would be a bad first board for someone to try and get jumped into. But if you're that ambitious, um, I'll do the actual soldering and assembly work for you. But it's a little outside the scope, I think, of what most people would be willing to tackle, especially for like a one-off board. Uh, that's just my two cents. No, really? Speaking of joysticks, you got something else up your sleeve, man? If you do, I'm super stoked to hear about it. You don't really give me bad news at all that I've seen. Uh, okay, so we've got all your Band-Aid mods on there, and now I can show you guys what I got some of that's real awesome. Like, real awesome. Boom. Got some of this. Some of this. See that? GPL 205 grade zero. For lubing them stabs and switches. Ooh, guys, look. Opening it up on stream. Oh, his nose. There we go. Broke the seal. Sp 
speaking of lube. <laughs> All them lubes. Guys got some 205 grade zero. Much. Okay, I'm gonna move your caps locks out of the way so I don't get lube all over them. Move this extra band-aid mod or band-aid material out of the way. I appreciate that you don't want to leak something crazy. Um, feel free to tell me somewhere else. I will not leak anything you want to and anything you don't want me to leak in this case. Um, razors and Stroma, yes, heard of. It's the mini or Weaver thing, right? Yes, yes, okay. That's cool. That's a cool tease. It really is. I like joysticks. I'd be down, if for no other reason than the memes. Recessed on the front, ooh. Ooh, really? That's pretty cool. That's actually really, really cool. So anyway, back to this 205 grade zero stuff. It's been a little while since I've been working with 205 grade zero. Mostly I've been doing uh, 3204 stuff. I actually think that 205 grade zero is better for stabs and only better for linears in terms of switches. Though I may start experimenting with some of my own switches, trying to do the proper amount of and mix of grease and oil to get 205 into tactiles, partially because I have so much of it, but also because I really want to come up with good technique to use 205 instead. I actually like the Crytox in terms of its separation properties a little bit more than the Trebosis. That being said, in practical applications for a key, you're, you don't need to be worried about Trebosis separating over any reasonable amount of time that you'd be using your board. And even if it did, it wouldn't be, you'd have the heavier grease components falling to the bottom and just not providing the lubricity that you want. For mods, yeah. Yeah, of course, first, for, um, oh, wait, wait. Yeah, obviously for step stabs, it's the, it's awesome. But I'm not anticipating running out anytime soon. I am actually thinking about getting a similar quantity to this, although this is not all of what I ordered, but I am considering getting a similar quantity to this of just 3204 or 204 grade zero, which would be optimal, I think. Although a little bit harder to source, like I might have to wait a while. Jack Static, man. I'm uh, I'm really excited about your builds. I hope they drop at the right time for me, personally, financially, etc. Because I'm really considering that. Uh, I'm really planning on jumping in on that number two if if I can get a spot. 
although it may compromise my ability to try and jump in on the Gene V2CE. That's okay. I would live. Mm. 205 on like 10 holy pandas and stop had to be too careful and sparing. You do, you do. It is a lot more viscous than 3204 or 204 grade zero. It is for sure. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you can tell like right here when I smack it, right? I mean, 3204 would just be like, um, but for stabs, for stabs, it's awesome. IMO. IMO. Speaking of which, what are we doing now? Oh, we're doing stabs. I know. I... Okay. If if I'll hold you to it if I'm that lucky because <laughs> because well oh I don't want well, I'm out of this. This is a new set. Stay over there. Because man oh man. That would be amazing. I, I mean, I'm sure I'm not going to get that lucky, right? But at the same time, I got to try, man. I got to try it. We're not using that. We are using some of these. So that's one stabilizer worth. Two stabilizer worth. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Three stabilizer worth. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sorry, I'm the count now. Four, one, two, three, four, and then five. One, two, three, four, five, yes. So one, two, three, a four, ah, ah, ah. A five, ah, ah, ah. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, man, if I get that lucky, I'll be super, super, super stoked. But that's kind of why I'm potentially willing to go for both, right? But don't worry, we'll find out about the number one before we find out about the Gene CEV2. Um, how good are wireless boards now in terms of latency? Uh, that's a really good question, man. I, I wish I had the answer. Um, probably not as good as wired, but it's possible, right? I mean, this mouse that I have right here, this Logitech G903, is one millisecond or less, which is better than most wired mice, um, let alone wireless of input latency, of input delay, I think is what you're talking about. But, um, but, so much more viscous. Been doing it with 3204 so much lately. I gotta be real careful on this one. Not to over lube. As it is so much more viscous. And we will test it before we, you know, solder it together. Make sure it's an appropriate amount of viscosity. I.e. that it actuates inside the stabilizer. Okay. Um, getting a G Pro wireless, yeah, uh, yep. Yeah. The the Mises, the Mises are are um, are pretty good now. But I would say honestly that um, the wireless over Bluetooth is probably pretty low if it's implemented correctly on the receiver and transmitter. But if you want any of the glowing. 
I would I would recommend that you stay away from the wireless because those batteries are going to go quick comparatively. Very quick. Quite, quite, quite quickly. So yeah, I, I would stay with, honestly, if I were you, I would stay with, um, I would stay with wired, personally. It's just me though. They make some cool cables, man. They look real awesome. Like really, really awesome. Okay. So we're gonna feel this one, see how it how it goes. I'll just lube this whole stabilizer before before we do any of the others. Since it's been so long. With two oh five grade zero. Make sure that it's right and that it actuates properly. That's gonna work. That's gonna work well. Um, so, you're always impressed by people who can lube stabs without getting it all over their fingers, and you're not one of them. <laughs> you know, more of it gets on my fingers than I care to admit, honestly. Um, where do you get that amount of um, 205? Okay, so what you do is is you get a hold of Miller Stevenson, um, the chemical supplier, and you beg them to get you some because Camures or uh, DuPont, right? Only produces this stuff in limited quantities, the grade zero at least. Um, Grade two is available like everywhere, which is why you see a lot of those novel keys lubes that they've released recently are grade two. Um, so it's it's a harder. It's not that it's more viscous; it's that it's harder. So at the same temperature, it'll actually give more resistance than those other ones than these, which in my opinion makes them not very suited to stabilizer work. However to each their own. If you like that thing, then do it, but I think it's harder to work with, honestly, than 205 grade zero, so if you're familiar with that, then, well, you know that that's saying something. Anyway, um, so you contact them, and you beg them, and they're gonna try and convince you that you absolutely don't want this, and that it's a pain, and then you're gonna have to tell them that my application needs this. This is the correct product for my application and know why this would be the correct product for your application. 
and then maybe they'll find some or order some for you or you'll have to wait a long time until it comes in stock um, when the manufacturer makes another one and then you get it yep that's pretty much how it works oh these stabilizers are in awesome positions just want you guys to know they like oh no well just the spaces does not need uh does not need washers on the space because there's zero tracing anywhere near that it doesn't come with washers by the way um no stab sets do for some reason but i have some and i use them all over my um my customer builds to avoid shorts where applicable um yeah, so you call them, and I'm telling you, they're gonna, it's gonna be a problem, right? But like, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna make it sound like it's the end of the world. So just be prepared for that. And then, you know, you pay a bunch of money for what in any other industry would seem like, or in any other hobby would seem like a ridiculous amount. And frankly, it is kind of a ridiculous amount, even for us, right? Okay, so now we're gonna test this out at least. Make sure that we didn't over lube it, because, you know, it's been a while since working with 205 grade zero. Oh yeah, that was perfect. No delay or lag. I'm gonna take this off so I can hear if there's rattle. Listen. Perfect, by the way. Perfect. It's the perfect amount. I have not lost. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me mute that real quick. Okay. You can hear just a little bit, but it's not rattle so much as me moving the board more than I want and actually actuating the switch a little bit. But anyway, you can feel it, you can hear it, it's great. It was just the right amount. So anyway, now that we've got that salt, and that we're comfortable with the application again, which I am now, we'll apply the rest of our stabilizers. Anyway, yeah, so like I said, it's been a while since 205, so I wanted to make sure make absolute sure that we were doing this thing with the correct amount to not mess up somebody else's build somebody else's board or honestly even if it was mine it'd be the same thing you know it's funny because i watch some of the other um streamers right and honestly everybody kind of looks at it the same way when they do customer boards as far as i can tell it's um you know they do it like they would do their board and it's one of the things I love about our community. Like everybody seems to care, not everybody, but all the like people that you consider community members anyway, seem to care. It's good. It means it's a healthy community. I think it's one of the things that draws me to this community the most, honestly. People seem to be really cool and wanting to help and just into premium nice things. It's great. Also, yes, the food envy. That's okay. When I'm done with this, it'll be late. But I'll go I'll go eat some food. Oh yeah, I already took that one off. Okay. So one that was already in there. Yep, and there's eight in there. So great. All right, now let's hit these up, get them done. So for anybody who's curious or doesn't know um, in this, the reason we're doing that thing so cautiously with that is that this type of lubricant is 
not the lubricant that I've been working with very frequently lately, but it's also much easier with this type of lubricant to um, over, over lubricate things. But it is a really good lubricant otherwise. Like it really damps the sound and has the right properties to do it right. It just requires much more careful application than with less viscous and or less hard, slightly, lubricants, like the ones that I mentioned. There's a way to half cheat, but half actually do it right too. On stabilizers, it's cheating, I think, a little bit, um, which is to dilute this with an oil, a similar oil made uh, uh, another Teflon oil made by the same people, in fact, with the same brand name, Crytox, um, and mix it up really well. However, on stabilizers, I think it's cheating because one day that will separate and the oil will run off and it will be... Even if it takes a long time, if you don't use your board very much at all, it'll be way more likely to happen sooner than later. And eventually it will separate. And it will leave, I would guess, a pretty undesirable effect. And actually, I'm really happy that the first time I'm using this stuff in a long time is with Zeal stabilizers because it's clear. It's really easy to tell exactly how much you're applying. Not sponsored by any of those guys. Not by Zeal. Definitely not by DuPont. <laughs> um, so I just appreciate their products. They're very good. Very, very good. Um, sorry you missed the ones I mentioned earlier. Oh, hold on. I thought I should have cut me. <laughs> it was too tough. Well, sorry about that, at least. The Pino is healing the <laughs> mental scars. Nice. Um, no, no, no. I find 205 easier to over-lubricate versus 3204 for any application. Um, dielectric is super thick. Um, but for some reason, I've applied dielectric fairly, fairly thick on stabs before. Which, by the way, I recommend never using dielectric grease for stabs if you can avoid it. But anyway, um, it's a passable solution. But I have seen it dried out on a board before. In fact, my FC980C stabilizers were lubed with it when I bought the board and it was dried out and I when I took it apart to install BKE heavy domes I relubed this relubed it to fix that um still don't love that board I mean it's nice it's just I'm not really that into Topra I guess um, yeah, so hold on, let me see that. What did you actually post? You think you're in love with back to school? A 40? Okay. Yeah, if you like tiny builds, man, do it. Um, so you want a 40 with a numpad? Wasn't there a, wasn't there a really condensed build? I'm trying to I know I've seen a condensed build that had a numpad so it was like 40 on the alpha nooms but then a numpad man slip in my mind what it is now yeah okay sorry sorry <laughs> sorry ah. 
and it's 40. Uh, your favorite board, actually, huh? Really? Pause on which one? KBD fan something. Zomo elements. Nice. Yes. That's funny. I like it. It was all capsed. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. I know it is. I was totally messing with you. I'm happy you caught it. <laughs> uh oh, the music isn't on. You guys, I'm I'm bad. I didn't turn it back on. We're turning that back on. And by the way, if it's ever too loud, you guys, you know it'll let me know. I hope. Let me know. It's back at exactly the same volume it was at. I had just muted it. Uh, a little loud. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, then. I will lower it. That's the way to do it. How is that? Did that lower it enough? If not, I'll control it here. I want it to be the right volume for everybody. This is your store, Uni. Oh, man. This is going to make me depressed, by the way, because I also got in on the store, Uni group buy, and mine was all chunky, too. Also, they didn't send me all of the things that I asked for. They sent me some other stuff. Store Uni. They sent me 204 grade double zero, 203 grade double zero, 203 grade zero, and 204 grade zero. I did order 204 grade zero and uh, two orders of that so one of these should be both of them should be 204 grade zero and then i did not order 203 grade double zero i ordered 205 grade zero and 205 grade double zero so three of these things are wrong and they're chunky and i have not used them as a result of it so the answer is unilaterally no i would not use that and i would be mad I'm not mad at them, but also it was super slippery. When I pulled the um, when I like when I opened the bubble wrap that it was in, it just got everywhere. And by the way, this was not gross when I opened it. So some of these zeal stabs have a really shallow channel and it's real tight for some of these to get in. It's weird. This is true on the other order that I made too. Like this one's really easy, but that last one like had some kind of plastic flashing inside of there, I think that made it more difficult. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like once the stab wire goes in there, it's gonna be fine. But getting it in to, yeah. Hopefully there's no, no one childish in my stream to catch that mistake. Anyway, but putting the stabilizer wire into that um, channel is going to, like this one, this one's tight. Like I can feel drag on the tip of this little brush. I mean, once, it, once the stabilizer wire goes into the channel, it's totally fine. Here, I'll actually show you guys. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to say that on stream. <laughs> um, when a customer is ready to pay for stuff, they pay you, then the stuff goes to your place. Um, that totally depends. Uh, I'll totally go over the specifics with you, um, but it's 
I'll say it here on stream, it's totally fine. So I handle my build orders where customers don't have the parts in hand already in, um, in a couple different ways. So really there's just two general options, right? If you are a customer or a prospective customer, what I expect is for you to either procure the parts, have them shipped to you, then ship them to me. Or if you already have the parts, you would just ship them to me, right? Same case. And then the other case is where I order parts on someone's behalf. But when I order parts on someone's behalf, I invoice them twice. I invoice them once for just the parts order that I'm gonna place on their behalf. And I include the PayPal fees, the shipping to me um, for those parts, the uh, shipping to me. Yep, see, there it is, and now it works fine. It's weird, did that on the last ones. So yeah, I invoice them for the parts themselves, whatever taxes or fees are included, including the PayPal ones, and then the shipping to me. And most people who don't already have their parts in hand actually opt for this. Uh, when I started doing it this way, I was hoping that it would encourage people to just order the parts. However, I haven't gotten burned. It's worked out pretty well so far. And because I'm invoicing them in advance, it, uh, you know, it'd be pretty hard to get burned on it. But the um, then the second invoice is for the labor. Once I'm done with this build, for instance, I will invoice the customer for this work that I'm doing here, which I already quoted him for, so he knows what it's gonna cost. Um, there have been a couple instances where that number has changed, i.e. where someone either has me or needs me to do repair work because the part, oh, that's disappointing because something was broken. So someone sent me a kit once, things were broken. You guys can probably watch the VODs and figure it out. But I, I inspected their board before we ever got to this point. So I, I knew that that was the case. So we talked about it. Um, Anyway, um, nothing bad happened or anything, and I, you know, I was fully willing to just eat the time investment or whatever. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so they could, they could in theory have it shipped to me if whatever vendor um, allowed for that type of behavior. I, I don't know any that most people just want you to ship or want to ship to your um, PayPal address only as a safety precaution for them in case somebody's PayPal address got stolen. But anyway, that would be acceptable too. Um, the thing is, is a build doesn't ever enter my queue until all of the parts have arrived and I've had a chance to look at them. Like, that's just my rule. Come on. Good, none of that got anywhere except a little tiny bit on my finger right there, which is gross. And I'm usually not clumsy about this stuff at all. Anyway, yeah, so that's, that's that's how that works. Um, that's really the only options I'm willing to accept. I've thought about putting in my in my Reddit posts when I post these ads exactly that thing. I'm not doing it that way. This needs washers. Um, but the reality is, is I don't want that Reddit post to get so long that it's that you have to read through a bunch of legalese. I'd rather just explain that as we go to get you in the process, or in the case of what I did most recently, try and make the form so that it guides you through and then I respond with something. And I have some like boilerplate-ish templates that kind of discuss, it's not really a template, it's just I have some copy and pasteable text 
that kind of explains a portion of that, but more often than not, I actually just rewrite it out when I'm reading that boilerplate-ish kind of thing. Um, you know, I'm not taking so many orders that this thing is, like, impossible for me, right? I mean, I do get a lot of traffic usually right when I post one of those, but it's okay because I don't post one of those until my queue is low enough to warrant taking more work. And people kind of contact me based on my previous post as I'm as I'm waiting, so that queue kind of grows longer, and that's okay too. And I'm hoping that at some point it it mostly just carries on through the stream, like people watch it and they know to contact me on Reddit or Discord or wherever they can find me just to get it. Word of mouth is kind of the best reputation and if you're already watching my stream and you want one, then I feel like it's being done the right way. Yeah, that's good actually. Perfect. Yeah, so that's kind of how that thing works and that's kind of how I want it to work, honestly. Just easy, easy going. Um, I don't know. So far, I've mostly liked the customers that I end up actually taking on. Like, everybody's been cool, and part of my vetting process for if I want to take the work in my mind definitely is like does this sound like it's going to be a decent exchange where everybody gets out what they want I think any business that you're doing even though I'm not really intending on taking this stuff on as like business that makes a lot of money or something like that it any business that you're in it's it's absolutely about managing people's expectations and so that's like why I do a quote. I talk to them and I figure out what it is they're after and then I build them a quote document that we can use as tracking and stuff afterward. It's to try to make sure everybody has the same and good expectations of how the transaction will turn out. Could I do it better? I'm sure I could. I'll always be trying to improve that. I mean, I've only posted on Reddit three times now and the other one was like, you know, just the other night, so. It's, iter it's iteratively getting ever so slightly better. But it's turned out well for me so far, and I hope it continues to. And I hope that people are learning from the streams too. Some of them are way more educational, I'd say, than others, but you know, sometimes there's a diff slightly different audience. With the exception of some of you, some of you guys show up every time and I really appreciate that or are showing up regularly. Thank you to all my regular viewers and followers and anybody who watches the VODs afterward, anybody. It's a... Uh, does not go unappreciated. Do I know anyone who can swap mouse PCB? Um, I mean, do, do you have a donor mouse PCB or like a donor mouse to get the PCB from? I, I'm having a hard time seeing what you're trying to do. Also, not all mice are created equal, though I think most people who do this kind of work in general could probably execute a PCB swap on the mouse if the PCB were readily available. Very curious about that. About what you mean by that. I've not gotten super into mice. It's kind of weird the mechanical keyboard community isn't into 
like super all about some kind of like customized mice and I think that probably has to do with the fact that um, an all metal mouse body though that would be an amazing meme build for somebody um, like a machined mouse would be freaking bananas and crazy expensive for a mouse though it would be super cool to have a keyboard with a matching mouse Jack Static are you listening bro you could machine an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene mouse to match the Irma <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm not trying to sign you up for something that you don't want to be signed up for. It sounds silly, but it's funny. Um, basically, you want a G Pro wireless inside an FK2 body. There's a CNC aluminum mouse. It's horrible. Yeah, that's why I always say an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. The aluminum one sounds like it'd be heavier than is absolutely necessary and probably fairly um you think you think even ultra molecular weight polyethylene is too heavy yeah i guess but you could make it thinner i don't know whatever yeah you're probably right acrylic or polycarbonate wouldn't be too heavy though probably the aluminum one sounds crazy heavy though <laughs> Good for rage quits. Yeah, just to throw it at your monitor. <laughs> um, that'd be ridiculous. That would be ridiculous. Um, <laughs> so you want a G Pro. Man, I mean, technically, any of the things are possible. But if you actually wanted to execute something like that, I mean, I would expect that the amount of like fitting involved in executing something like that would be fairly high. So it would probably end up costing a lot of someone's time, therefore probably their money. Or therefore your money if you had somebody else do it I don't know anybody who is definitely willing to take that on um, I think that that's some specialized work right there don't get me wrong though I mean someone out there would be willing to I'm sure like I've I've done some custom work in other arenas not this hobby that's like making something that's actual fabbing with both with milling machines and then with um, like sheet metal really thick sheet metal and um, hydraulic presses and jigs for bending and stuff like that. And I think somebody out there would be willing to do the work for you, but in all of those cases where I did that um, in the past, it's been for, for me and or close friends where we just wanted to do a specific cool thing. So we went out of our way. Oh, did I grab one too many stab wires? It's better than one too few sets of stabilizers. Um, mouse feet are actually, yeah, I did know that they were, well, some of them are not ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Some of them are PTFE pucks. However, I do you think that I have recognized some as ultra high molecular weight polyethylene? If you look at your mouse, you'll see. Yeah, of course. Of course. It'll feel smooth, yes. Oh, I'm sure people do it. I just don't know if, that, if those two specific mice are capable of being swapped in that way. 
If you can point me to an article where somebody did it, I'm sure that I, mean, I may be even willing to take it on if there's good guidance where other people have done that thing. But that's, it's outside my wheelhouse. It'd be pretty separate kind of thing. It would be cool. I would stream it. Can't even find a Reddit post on it. Yeah, I... I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've done keyboard things where I didn't know exactly what the outcome... Like, I hadn't... There was no guide on how to do it, and I was just like, no, no, no I'm gonna wire this thing up different. Um, if you look at my gallery, there's a picture of an IKBC MF-108 with Galaxy Class uh, cap set on it. And so that board, I took it apart and I changed the connector out because it had a micro USB connector on it to start. So I took that thing apart and I changed it to a micro USB, or to a USB-C connector rather, um, and got the whole thing set up. You know, I switched out all the switches in it, although that's not super novel. Um, you know, and, and it required some fab work, like finding the right connectors and trimming them with a Dremel so that they had really short bezels so that they'd fit in the tight space that's under that board and stuff like that. So it took some measuring and then ordering some parts. And generally I won't do that kind of, well, it's not that I won't. Generally, I'll only do that for customers that clearly they know what the limitations are within the community and they're trying to get a specific thing done. Um, and they're willing for it to, for me to kind of take my time finding the right parts and stuff after they send me the board, which I would need to even figure that thing out and accept that if I'm unable to accomplish it because it's just not doable based on the dimensions internally or whatever, that it's gonna come back to them and it would be their cost. So basically, the people I would be really comfortable doing that with would be people who are past customers who I did a build for or community members that I can literally have that conversation and they're like, yeah, yeah, we get it. Or anyone who really understands that, but truly understands that there's a risk of not succeeding based on design limitations. Uh, able to uh, hit up some guy on Discord kind of shady if I see no videos yep yeah I understand man I, I, I totally get that that's actually I think part of um, why I started posting this thing on the reddit subreddit and I guess I had some some trade karma when I did my first post already, so people were like, oh, well, this guy's made however many trades I had made in my first one. He probably, he's not a lemur. By the time my second one came, my second post came around, I did have some people hit me up and they were like, well, you know, how do I know that you're not gonna like run off with my board or whatever? And I was like, well, you can go watch my Reddit or my, my stream and uh, I'm doing customer builds in there and I mean, if I ran off with somebody's board, it'd be real easy for somebody to track me down and, <laughs> like, slam me for it, and I'd probably never get business again. Um, you know. That's, that's a thing. It could happen. It would happen if I stole somebody's stuff, so... Luckily, on the second time when somebody did start paying me about that, it's pretty easy to be like, well, I mean, this is how you know. But to be f to be fair, that person sent me, you know, two boards, two really nice boards. I mean, like, you know, sixteen hundred dollars, seventeen hundred dollars, something like that, worth of keyboards, worth of customs. So I understand. It's a fair question. 
It's a fair question, even if you're sending me not like very little money, even if you're sending me anything. However, my answer really isn't going to change, and I think that if somebody told you to hit a dude up on Reddit and that person doesn't have any kind of creds or any kind of um, any kind of reputation on some marketplace or something that he could lose as a result of it, I wouldn't probably send my board to anybody either, frankly. Or my my item that is expensive, whatever it is. It's just, you know, it's not the smart thing to do. To risk your stuff. But it helped when my second one came along that I had, I think, I don't know if it helped or not. I think it did, though, and I appreciated the people speaking up. I think Nathan Kim posted something in there and was like, oh, this guy did some cool stuff, and Heine Bush, I think, did, and it, you know, I mean, it means a lot. It does. It's cool when other community members are like, no, no, this guy did good stuff. It was solid. Like, we liked it. I was like, yeah. Not only did it make me feel good, but I think it lended some credibility to the, uh, to the situation. Lent. Lended? That's weird. Yeah. I don't know why I said that. Probably because I wasn't thinking very much about what I was saying so much as this stabilizer looping. I've spent a lot of time on these stabilizers. Like, more than I feel like I normally do. Probably because I'm so trying to be so cautious. Because even though we tested it, I'm like, oh no. 205 grade zero. Be careful. Not 3204. <laughs> And that is true. It is not 3204. I will be right there with you guys. Um, I know it. Does. Yes, it does. It does have those. Um, and normally that's kind of what I do with it. I don't know why I didn't pull it out. Um, PTFA has the lowest coefficient of friction. UHMW is close and it's cheaper. Companies will lie and say it's PTFE so people are comforted. Yes, you're totally, totally correct. But... I've seen ones that are, I believe, fairly obviously PTFE. I, I could be wrong. Um, uh, around the house for protecting things. I'm talking about on the older boards, too. Um, you're right. It is great. Uh, is that blue mat you use with the built-in screw trays and stuff? What is it? Okay, um, I'll pull it out and I'll show you. And actually, I need to, and it reminds me, I need to put an equipment link up in my Twitch channel, which I don't have right now, but you can get that on Amazon. It's a really large soldering mat, silicone soldering mat. Um, be careful, you're gonna see a lot like it that are just much smaller versions made for use with small electronics like, um, like um, cell phones, stuff like that. Anyway, so we've got all these Stabilizers set up. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I'm going to test a switch in there real quick. Sorry guys, delaying 
that one is. I don't think it's too slow, but... I just want to make sure. Needs to be done right. You know. You know it. Where's the other... Oh, it's over there. I was like, where'd that go? Not a problem. Okay. That's fine. Alrighty then. Yeah, these other ones definitely aren't going to be problematic if that one wasn't. Um, okay, so now we're going to take the case apart. We're going to get this thing snapped in, start throwing switches in, and start soldering. So in order to accomplish that, I'm going to um, toss this. Don't need it anymore. Throw this back in here. Oh, no. Seat. Okay. I am probably going to put this stuff in little vials. Not little, but not as large as this container. Ooh, that locks together real nice, guys. It just goes thunk. It's not like screws where it could miss a line afterward. It just goes locks in place. It's very nice. Um, why do people use split boards? Um, no, I mean, it's just the layout that they like. Oh, you mean split like, oh, for ergonomics, some, yeah. Remsky has looted a bunch of my switches and done a good job. Found out about him from Nathan Kim. Yeah. And and I've heard that he is, does great work. I don't think you're the only one who's commented about that. Maybe in here, but I have heard that too. Oh, that's awesome. He lives close. Um, I feel it's necessary to use premium supplies to get the most out of higher quality switches, meaning like something like Zerio, Zelios in a glorious modular or mass drum alt take away from what people love about them. Using a hot swap board, I think, is what will detract a little bit from them because the mounting is not as solid. However, you will still get great benefits from having from having Zelios in those boards. Um, although, I did give a I did give a friend of mine a glorious modular in fact, two different friends, two different glorious modulars that I bought off Mastrop a long, long time ago. And I lubed the stabilizers in both of them. Um, because that's where you're going to get the least good experience from. Um, but I wouldn't waste the money on it either. I would actually just buy a different board. GMMKs are not that good. They really aren't. And I think to put Zelios in them, you have to clip the PCB mount legs because they do not, um, they don't have the holes for them. Though you can correct me, I don't remember that well because I don't have one here right now to check. So I can't be 100% sure, but pretty sure. Um, can't put licks on a turd, feeling silly, yeah. Um, but not, you know, yeah, I agree. Wasted good switches on a white fox and regretted it immediately. Some boards just don't sound or feel good. Yeah, honestly, here's my best advice in, from what you just said, my very best advice is no matter what you do, don't get hot swap boards. They aren't that good. Get switch testers, determine which switches you want, solder them in, be ready to desolder them and change them later. Or send them to somebody like me for desolder and resolder. And buy something middle of the road, like a KBD fans product, price wise, because that's where you're gonna get the very best value. They make very high quality parts 
for the price that you get. I'll give you a great example, right? If you buy a TX 1800, that's actually not a great example because the TX, TX 1800 is fairly inexpensive for what it is. Um, honestly, compared to other customs, it can be, the TX boards are not too bad. Um, so, Here's a good example. The salamander that I have, that TX84 over there. Um, I have a TX84 SE, all of those options. Those are more expensive than a KBD uh, 8X. And then the new version of the KBD 8X, 8X looks freaking awesome. But ignoring that part, even the old one, the KBD 8X is, as far as I can tell, a much, much, much better value than that TX. Is it as premium? It is not. It is absolutely not. Um, is it close? Uh, I mean, it's kind of horseshoes and hand grenades here. Yes. If you're at the top end, you're not aiming with horseshoes and hand grenades. You want a rifle shot directly to the heart of this, right? You want a perfect hit. And even then you won't get it sometimes. You just won't. So it's pretty close, honestly, for the price difference. So my recommendation is you buy you buy something like that if you're new to this hobby. If you're if you can afford it and you know that you're into this hobby, um, you know, by all means, feel free to grab the more expensive version. For real. Um, however, I think, personally, you're better served getting into the hobby with that because there isn't really an end game. If you're getting into the hobby, you're gonna learn pretty quick that end game is a joke. It's not real. It is not real. Oh, it won't seep onto there. Yeah, so anyway, I suggest getting something like that and then building it up with premium switches, solderable, and just do it. Take my word for it, you will be happier in the end. Um, oh, you got one? You got the TX-108 and the PCB wasn't great. Dang it! I almost jumped on one when Kin posted the extras link. And I just was getting in on other things. There was no... I wanted one. Um, KBD fans. Resell value on KBD fans. This stuff is great. Won't he pay a huge price again for TX, I don't think. I understand. I totally understand you're at the stage where you probably wouldn't know the difference between premium stuff. Um, but here's the thing. I'm telling you, if you buy a bunch of GMMKs, you buy a bunch of the hot swap boards, you buy a bunch of them, in the end, if you do get into this hobby, you will know the difference and you will be disappointed in those boards. You will sell them. That's what you'll do. It's, it's not a big deal. It's just there are truly truly advantages to the other boards that we're talking about. Um, they're real, real advantages. And I urge you to consider those options even though they're a little bit more expensive. Um, especially when the cost of 
those options. Is actually not um, is actually not that much higher in the end if you're not soldering them yourself. I mean, I don't charge a lot, a lot for my services. If all you want is just your switches soldered on, um, if you want in switch PCBs, I'll give you an example of something where the price goes up pretty dramatically with me. If you want in switch. PC or uh, in switch with uh, LEDs soldered in. I, I know that not everyone does this, but I hate doing them. They're a pain in the ass. I um I literally charge just as much for that option as I do for the um as I do for the uh, switches themselves, right? So if a 60% uh, if you, a full size let's say you have an 1800 or a full size I'm gonna charge you 40 bucks to solder the switches in if you also want in switch LEDs I'm gonna charge you $40 more because it's literally twice the soldering and actually that solder work of those switches is harder requires way more work you guys saw me do in switch LEDs on uh, something or other I don't remember right now, but you've seen me do it if you watch my VODs or you watch the actual streams and it's uh yeah, it's it's a thing. And I agree with what these guys are saying right now, by the way, about the KVD ADEX Mark II especially. I have not had one in my hands. However, I can tell literally just from looking at um at the pictures at you can watch what Nathan Kim had to say about um, the one that he got, right? It's Nathan Kim that had one, right? Yes, the polycarb one. Though that's polycarb, it's probably not the best. Um, it's not an apples to apples. But in general, the people who are designing it, the work that's being done on it, it it's going to be awesome. And the price is as low as it's going to get for that kind of a board. I mean, the designer is literally not taking a profit to make it available to everybody. I, I am, I've never been more certain of any of them, of any of the boards that are on here, that that is going to be the best value board that exists this year for sure, or at least up to this point, as far as I can tell. If you want, if you want TKL, if you want full size, it's still going to be the best value because then you can get the KBD, the the pad V2, right? The matching pad to go with it. That looks like it's off center. <laughs> there we go. That's right. You can check it. Correct. I mean, it's gonna be the best value. Do it. It's not, it's not even one to question too hard. Everyone in the everyone in this community really knows it and has been talking about it and expect not only expect but know that it will be amazing quality. KBD fans' quality has just been increasing and increasing. Their value has just been getting better and better. And this is kind of the culmination of them upping their game and finally there being some kind of truly good design that they're pushing. I'm pretty stoked for it. I'm like, with the other boards and keycap sets that are running right now, I'm probably not going to jump in on it before the GB runs out. If there are extras or if somebody sells one, which eventually they will, I'll probably end up with one, but the other stuff that's going up, I don't know. I'm having a hard time justifying it in my mind. Um, for me personally to even buy one, but if I can swing it, 
if there's enough left in my keeps fund by the end of this, uh, by the end of the group buy, I will absolutely jump in on it. Will jump. I'm trying to swing it. That's part of why I'm offloading some of the other stuff that I don't use. Um, just because, you know. There's no... If I'm not using some other stuff, I should get rid of it anyway, and this month is the perfect month, because everything wants to tax my keyboard, uh, keyboard allowance. And you guys said a bunch of stuff, and I, um... Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna get this thing tacked down. So can you guys see pretty well everything that's going on here? So you were asking about it. So these screw divots are numbered. So are these ones. These parts are magnetic right here. This is magnetic, this is magnetic, this is magnetic, and this is magnetic with these slots for you to put bits or whatever in. These aren't magnetic, but you can you know, stick drill bits or whatever in there if you're using that. I don't know why you would, but... You know, and then these I stick uh, like picks and stuff in. You can stick bits in there. Like, here's a bit, right? I never really stick the fat end in there, but you can. Etc. It's silicone, so you know it kind of allows me to not fear that I'm going to damage these expensive, nice keyboards. Oh, I need to turn the fan on. Sorry, guys, I'm going to have to turn this fan on. It's going to be super annoying. I'm going to do it in a second, though. after I tack a couple of these corners down. notice I'm compressing the corner making sure that it's in there tight flowing the joint like I normally do and holding it under tension and reflowing the joint to make sure that it's down all the way then I'm flowing the second pad on there the second leg So I am not a big fan, just FYI for anybody that doesn't know this already, um, of integral plates. It's my least favorite thing about this design. About this keyboard specifically. So I can hear it click just a little bit, so I know So, by the way, the legs on this, the PCB legs on these switches fit pretty tight into this board. It's fairly obvious. Like, pretty dang tight. Um, 
Yeah, man, no problem with the answer, seriously. Um, have I seen the Rama U80 mounting mute design? I have not. Um, you worry that it'll be too muted. Is it an isolation mount type? What is it? Um, do you have the link? Because now I'm real curious about it. I don't know, man. I'm kind of excited about most things that Rama is willing to do, though. Sandwich mount, but throughout the whole plate. Oh. Like, there's just layers that compress literally everywhere? How many screws are there to affect that? Or are they using just some super rigid or thick material to affect it? Okay, I'm gonna turn this fan on now. Hopefully it doesn't get too loud. That looks like it's probably a little bit quieter. As quiet as I can get it, background sound, yeah? I'm happy that it's a TKL, though. I really like TKL. As you mostly know, all of you guys. Oh. Super isolated. Does it isolate on the top itself? Oh, no, that's the bottom. I want to see the top portion. Does it isolate from the top? Because I only see there's like a bottom spacer piece. Super fixed plate though, I like that. Um, it may be too isolated, I don't know. Um, there's the, the J01, right? I mean, that's gonna be fairly isolated. I mean, frankly, it will be fairly isolated. I'm good with it. I mean, the number two is gonna be pretty isolated too. Biggest downside to the bigger holes, uh, the bigger switch pin holes, is um, more solder needs to flow into there. So what you're used to doing with your fixed hole spacings, they just increase. It's not like a big deal, it's just, you know, you have to hit it twice with the iron because you forget or it doesn't hit your expectation exactly. And they're different from each other because one takes more solder than the other. I don't know. I think isolation mount's gonna be okay. If you watch my build video for the Blue Alps AliExpress case, I did an all over isolation mount on it against the bottom of the PCB case with some neoprene. And honestly, it turned out spectacularly, although it is very isolated for a clicky setup. So it is super noticeable.
Um, about as tacked down as it needs to be realistically. Um, I am in the JO one and I'm fairly excited for it. Fairly excited for it. I think it's going to be an awesome board. I'm really happy for Jay that he's getting a few of them out there. Um, I know he doesn't want to put out too many, but I'm really happy that he's doing it because it looks like a super cool design, and honestly, I'm going to be really happy to have one. Um, These things are, um, the pins, the PCB mount pins on this thing are real tight. Okay, so we got your stepped caps in. I'm super excited for that. I'm in the punchy 1800. I'm going to try and get... That should be out real soon. I'm going to try for the number two in the Jane C, P2CE. Um, I'm going to try for the Irma. And that comes out. And maybe, probably... I don't know. I really do like the Alice, but I don't really like 60% in general, um, so maybe not. I realize it's not exactly 60%. I don't know how much I'd use it. I, it probably would just be like a cool board to have. And I don't know if I, I need that for sure. It depends on what else is around at the time. So I'll probably jump in on it, but that Irma is 100%. 100% I want that. I don't know, I go... I don't know, man. First of all, I'm really excited about the material that the, the Alice, I don't know. I think I really do have to try to jump in on it, no matter what, too. It's just, shit, man. Ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, plus it's an Alice, I don't know. Probably just, I would, I would kick myself if I didn't get in on it. But it totally depends on when the group buys run, man. Like, I don't know, if I got in on the Jane V2 and the... Well, I'm holding, I'm holding you to it, Jack Static, <laughs> what you said earlier. <laughs> if I get on both of those, totally holding you to it. <laughs> but I won't make you wait long. Um, yeah, I'm uh, fairly excited about most of the stuff I'm in. It's funny, I didn't think that I would be as excited for the punchy 1800 like by the time it got to the time that it was coming out, but I, I really do want to see it. I mean, I jumped in on the copper plate as well as the, um, I think it was an aluminum option. Uh, was it brass? I don't know. It was whatever. I also got the copper one. The one I'm excited for is the copper because, well, duh, copper. Someone could probably totally ruin my day and tell me that copper plates are terrible or something like that. They've tried them and bleh, and then I'd be, I, I don't know, I wouldn't be disappointed. I'd still be excited to jump in, but to try it myself. But it's a material I haven't tried for plate. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm actually kind of looking forward right now to seeing this board in a complete state. I think it's going to be a beautiful board. 
and I think the customer is gonna be <laughs> thanks Boopy Beth. BBB thanks BBB right isn't that what we decided earlier and TSC BBB and TSC if you guys hate that I won't call you that by the way just tell me um Yeah, I'm. I, I have a feeling that the copper will probably be a little bit more flexible, but definitely be less. I'm hoping less pingy than brass. Brass is so rigid that it like pings when you hit it a little bit, you know. Wait, it is what we decided, or it is annoying and don't do it anymore. It is, it just, it is. <laughs> okay, got it, thanks. I'm good with it. Is anybody else planning on getting in on the KBD-8X? It's like, has anyone decided they're getting in on the KBD-8X or the number two or the Gene V2CE or the Irma or the Alice in no particular order has anybody actually decided already that they're jumping in other than Jack Static who I know will at least be getting one of each of the latter two well not get in <laughs> um, you are in on the KBD 8x already yeah and the and the j01 that that I remember the s75 yes you know the sad thing is is I actually really like the 75 layout it's like I, I like 65 more than 75 but I actually do like 65 as a layout in general. Um, it's just like one more thing and I can't really justify it and honestly it's um, like I have that KVD 75 and I'm actually I'm trying to sell it right now I don't know if I will um, I think I, my price is probably posted a little too high um, I'll lower them a little bit I think but actually I've hit, had hits on the KVD 75 but on the rest of them I think it's a little too high Anyway, um, I think that I think that seventy five is really awesome and I like it, but sixty five is probably more more my jam because the F row, as nice as it is, is just not that necessary. And if I'm going compact already, then I probably would try for something that's as compact as would work for me. But I do love that rotary dial and I have to I have to admit that makes it a little bit more appealing and a little bit harder to not try for. Hopefully someone buys one and I get to build it. That's what I have to say about it. Um, Xeno, very nice. You're sad you missed it. Yeah. The Xeno, uh, I went to NorCal, and I'm pretty sure he brought a Xeno. Did he bring a Xeno? I'm pretty sure he did. I know he brought a Zephyr, and I was crazy surprised at how nice the finish was and the whole board just was, honestly. Um, Zeal does good work. I'm continually surprised, even though the prices are high, the products are great. Um, sad you missed it. Yeah, I'm sure, 100% sure you could, 100% sure you could uh, find somebody willing to trade <laughs> for an Alice or a Jane V2. Like their kidneys. 
maybe even both. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, at this point, I would not be surprised if somebody was literally willing to sell an unnecessary body part for it. It's crazy how much I see those things post for, and it makes me so upset that I did not jump in. I was so new when Jane V2 launched, and I, I like filled out the form. I was there. I was like, I just can't. Seven hundred dollars for a keyboard. What an idiot I was. That's why now I have to try. I have to try for the number two and for the um, for the number two and for the Jane V2 CE. Like I have to, right? I mean. Would I, wouldn't I be foolish not to after that mistake? that one down all the way. Yeah, I know. $700 keyboard, 3500 bucks. <laughs> F my life, right? Um, I know you wouldn't trade those boards, man. Nobody would. That's why they're. That's why you don't see them going for sale very much. Um, not including customs of that. Shipping so pricey, especially to Europe from here. You are correct, sir. It's unnecessarily expensive. Find that one U, that one U function button. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter what's the function button. Give me a key. Here, turn it off. Doesn't matter. Putting on the right one. I don't know why I took that other one off. I'm going to need it. But, you know, whatever. Perfect. Nope. I'll compress that whole bottom row down in, make sure that they're seated. Okay, okay. This thing still all looks good. All the lights come on, cool, again. Make sure everything looks seated. Okay. 
Um, if you guys haven't watched Black Summer, what? what are you talking about? Really? Ooh, dude. Nice. A zombie apocalypse? Like, I'm, I'm down. I'm actually kind of down. Not just kind of, I'm 100% down. Sounds super cool. We're doing the right thing. Okay, cool. Bottom row first, I guess. Bottoms up. Huh? What is this show, man? I really want to know about this now. intense, huh? Okay. Alright, man. You sold me. You sold me, Petrov. It's like, there's no way. I had it backward. I, In my mind, I was looking at the left side and the right side. But, you know, it's upside down. So I was, like, expecting a bigger gap on one side than the other. So I missed one in the interim. I will look up there soon. I want to hear about these zombies. This zombie show, man. Oh, man. I'm not going to ruin it for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. Because that would be a dick move. But I did just see Game of Thrones last night. Things that I wanted to happen happened. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of happy that show's in its last season. Like, don't get me wrong. I like the show. I mean, nothing bad by it because it, it does entertain me. But I'm kind of ready for the hype to end and for there to be another new thing that everybody loves. For another new show like that, hopefully. I mean, I guess that's dependent upon you know, HBO or whoever actually making a show like that. There are some good shows. Um, weird squid thing. Nice. <laughs> no good zombie emoji. So, squids. Um, so here's, um, here's a really good show, I thought. You may not. I don't know. Did anybody watch Jack Ryan? Man, I watched that show, like, I don't know, maybe a month, a month and a half ago, and I was kind of blown away by how good that was. It was not nearly as good as I expected. Not nearly. Um, okay, I'm going to tell you where I got with Westworld. Loved the first season. I don't want to ruin it for anybody. 
but I will say that I remember Dexter and how it ended, and I remembered that not watching the last one or the last like two two and a half minutes of the show would have made that show like epically better for me, like epically better. I would have loved that show a million times, the ending at least a million times more, if I hadn't watched the last two minutes of Dexter. Maybe three, I don't know. Something around there. So. Season two of Westworld seemed like it was ending so well. I was watching it with a friend. It was ending so... I mean, like, I didn't like the second season as much as I did the first season, but I was like, okay, so this is ending in a way that's going to make me happy. And I was like, two two minutes from the end and I was like there's no way it ends right here because this would be like a happy ending or a good ending so they're going to have to cliffhang it or something and so I paused it looked over at my friend who also kind of felt the same way I did about the season and we were like do you want to just like end this show right here so we don't have one of those Dexter moments and he was like yeah I kind of kind of do kind of happy with this show being over for us and then that was it. So I'm not going to ruin it and say what happens where I got to. But, I mean, I think there was like a minute and 40 seconds left or something of the episode. And that's where I stopped it. Hopefully it wasn't a mistake. But the first season was so much better. Not that the second one was awful. It just was a lot longer and more protracted and getting weirder. That's 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 what happened. That's where it ended for me. The verdict is out. I can always go back to it if people are like, oh no, that was a mistake. <laughs> Spoiler, Dumbledore dies. You want to know something terrible? I um, They weren't friends of mine, but I met some people. Actually, I met them in a hot tub at an apartment complex of a friend's. Um, and I was talking to them shortly after that book came out, and I read it. And they were like, they were cool to me. They were like, did you read it? Like, do you know what happens, the whole thing? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, we pre-ordered the book. We got it. And we literally, like, skipped ahead, read the chapter titles, read part of the part of the chapter, like, skipped it through it, saw that Dumbledore died, and inside the bookstore, like, the midnight where everyone was going in and getting it, yelled out, in chapter whatever, Dumbledore dies, and then they ran out. And I was like, you guys are awful people. You're awful. I'm surprised that you didn't get, like, literally chased yeah, it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. I was like, these people are crazy. I mean, they're just random people that we ran into, but I was like, whoa. Whoa, these people. Terrible. Terrible humans. I'd have been pissed. I loved those books. Man, when they were new, I loved them. In fact, I loved them. Yeah, I know, but why? But why? Just to be jerks, because they were teenagers. Anyway, um, I loved those books. Those were great books, man. I remember I loved them so much that before the next one would release, I would read or actually listen to because I've always been kind of an audiobook person but even before Audible but I um I would either read or listen or some combination of the two the entire series over again starting with like the third one I think well going into the fourth so I read the whole series right before the fourth book launched so one, two, and three, and then that's where I got in. So for book five, and then book six, and seven, 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 um, I reread all of them before it. 
with the exception of the second one, because I didn't like the second book that much. I just uh, watched the movie. <laughs> Instead of rereading two, I just watched the movie. I mean, I did, re I did read the book, the second book, the first time I read it, but I've only read that book one time. Book five was Chungus? Dude, what do you mean by Chungus? You mean big? It was big. It was a meaty book. But then the last one was pretty meaty too, I think, right? Dude, I need to know what you mean by Chungus so much. <laughs> it's an awesome word. I do not know what it means. It actually sounds terrible. Like you hated it, but... I need to know. Book three, book three was the best, and then book four was really good too. I don't know though. Like honestly, there the first one is really good. It's just not very long, and there's not enough development of the characters. As you read the rest of them, you know, you, you see the rest of the development. Ooh, 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 are we done? I believe we are done. Well, we can find out real quick, I guess. We're gonna find out real quick. By doing this. up there. I don't like that. Hopefully I just missed them. Did not just miss them. So what is going on? don't like that. I know, totally uh-oh. Jay? Okay. Or enter. It's not good that it's a whole row like that. Is it possible something is shorted? Is there a missing diode knocked off or something? Yeah, KJ, KL, KL semicolon, all the way to enter, right? So if I look at the traces, the common traces, Hey man, it happens, what are you gonna do? We will figure it out though, one way or another. I mean, we tested the PCB, so it should be good. I mean, 
there's a there was a washer there, so that shouldn't be. Yep, that was it. So for what it's worth, what I did is, is if you look at K, um, it's going to be real hard to see with this camera. You know what? I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to get rid of switch hitter. I'm going to show you what I did and why I believe that to be the case. Okay. So if you look at K, you can see, hold on, I need one sec. You can see that right there, that's the end of this trace, and there's all of these diodes right here going parallel, all the way up to enter, and then this trace goes down and around this hole and up here, and then there's a little, um, like it touches this pad right here. It actually touches that pad right there. That pad, which is attached to this one, which is attached to this copper ring, which goes up here, right? So, or it doesn't, it's not attached actually. It's just, you should be able to get ISO enter activation here. So I was wondering if there was like some short right here that attaches over there, and I believe that's the case. So I'm gonna put this back in. Hopefully this doesn't short out. If it does, I don't know, man. I mean, I'd need like a nylon screw or something. Hopefully this doesn't short it out though. It does. That was a lot easier to fix than I thought it would be. Yeah, it does. I mean, in reality, that thing's probably in there fairly well as is. why they made PCBs green. Yeah, you're right. I know, it's hard to see. Sorry, I'll... I'll zoom back out, by the way. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I have options. I can leave this thing without... without a pad right there, or without a screw in it. I don't think I have any nylon screws, though. That would be weird, and it definitely didn't come with... Uh, it didn't come with stabilizers at all. So... I can try... Sorry, that's probably blinding. seems that it's only actually causing a problem. And it's fairly tight in there. Sorry guys, it's gonna be pretty bright. Okay, 
So I pulled that off. Then I'm going to do like a half a turn looser. So it's pretty loosely in, but it's, it's not going to... You know what? I have an even better idea. I'm going to leave it pretty loose so that the stab can't fall out. And I am going to... See where I put it, but I'm going to put Loctite on it. To keep it from actually unthreading. Blue Loctite, super light. I had blue Loctite up here, and I removed it, put it somewhere. So I was like, I don't use Loctite that much up here. If I was smart, I'd probably put it back in my garage where it normally goes. No, never mind. It's right there. I agree. Green solder mask for the win. But in this case, that's not what we got. So... Yeah, it's pretty loose. It's not that it's pretty loose, it's just it's not tight at all. There's just the tiniest bit of tension right there. So, customer, if you run into that, if you run into that, if somebody wants to clip this as soon as I'm done saying it, that'd be awesome. If you want, customer, or at least take a note of what time it is, if you can, clip it if you can, I would appreciate it. If not, I'll go through it. So this, the board right most stabilizer right there. If you're ever having problems with this row, this uh, KL all the way to enter not working, you need to remove that screw or loosen it very, very much. But the Loctite should prevent it from getting too tight or too loose and then the stabilizer flopping up. So hopefully that just works. If it's problematic though, remove it altogether. It's not going to come out of here under regular usage. And if it does, it'll be easy to center back up and push back down if you remove the keycap. Anyway, I think it's the best we can do because I think that's actually a problem with the board itself. This is the newest version of clue board, so I wonder if that's just a problem with them. Anyway. This is pretty done. It's definitely not a thing that we can fix. It does test well and works well otherwise. Anyway, so we are going to remove. Come on. Move this for that upshine, I guess. So when you guys are removing things like this, always choke up on the, get as close to where the plastic is being removed as you can. Don't like pull and then it's really long and far away because that's when it will rip. Because you want to apply pretty even pressure across the whole surface area that it's being removed from. The same is more true of things like this because there's less surface area altogether. Quite, quite, quite. I don't know if you caught that part that I mentioned. Tantrum. If you tighten 
the enter if the enter stabilizer is overly tight it starts making a short contact even with the washer there with the um, with something on the PCB in fact it could be on the top side of it so this stabilizer right here uh, nope yeah, this stabilizer right here. So the stabilizer on the enter right here. Right? If this is too tight, will cause KL semicolon quote and enter to not actuate. So what I did is is I left it fairly loose. It's in there, but it's just loose so that the stabilizer doesn't come up all the way when you like remove a keycap or something like that. And what I did is, is I put a little bit of Loctite in there to prevent it from loosening or tightening at all. And BBB was awesome and clipped it. Thank you so very much. So the solution, if that starts happening, is literally to remove that screw or loosen it very, very much so that it's like pretty loose, like so that it's raised above the surface of the PCB a lot so that it could flop back and forth, but the Loctite that's on there should prevent it from coming out altogether or getting any tighter and causing a problem. I believe that, not with this PCB specifically, but I believe probably with all clueboard PCBs, there's an issue here. And it could be caused by the bottom side, but actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably caused by the top side. This stabilizer, there's a metal insert on it, which is different than most because it's the zeal. So probably it's pushing it down and making a short on the top. But either way, um, it should not be problematic for you. And we're gonna test it when we put this back together anyway. So I guess I didn't ask you if you wanted the, um, the diffuser in. You can remove the diffuser altogether if I remove that bottom piece. I'm gonna put it back for shipping because it's easy enough to it back in but it's a thing if you remove this insert right here and you remove this you'll just have two board pieces and I'll show you you will just have two board pieces that go together or such was my understanding that you could operate these without you can you just have to push down so you'll have no diffuser, it'll just be like a triangle right there, but it's pretty sharp edge. Yeah, uh, I totally understand, man. I was actually worried when it happened to me, I was like, ah, oh. internally I was like, this could take a minute to figure out. But I just traced out the, the path that the electrical was going through and the commonality between all those keys and figured out where it was, or at least what pad was causing the problem. Where the first or last place in that case that I could see that could potentially be shorting before I had to like desolder it or something to figure it out. Luckily that didn't happen. Nope, don't get the, the blue stuff on it. All right, all right, all right. Shouldn't have done it with that anyway because tissue paper leaves the lint. I'll use a microfiber cloth. I don't think there's a way to get rid of all the dust that's on there though anyway. Not with it upside down or facing upward like this. But either way. Anyway. Um, oh, I still got to peel this off the acrylic piece. Yeah, that would be very difficult, I think, to figure out if you don't have both one, an electronics, an understanding of basic electronics, and then two, like a general understanding of how keyboards are wired together. And honestly, like, uh, like was being said before about green solder mask, like BBB was saying about 
PCBs having green for a reason. This one is not green. It's white, because that looks cool. And it reflects a bunch of light inside the case. You know, for the R's, the G's, and the B's. Doing exactly the thing I told you guys not to do, which is pull far away. Um, anyway, it, it's hard to see those traces. It's a little easier to put it on upside down if you can retain that um, that reflective plate a little bit. So anyway, we're almost done. We're gonna throw your keycaps on after this, and then we'll go over to the main rig. Let me turn that fan off in a second so it's not loud. Alrighty then. <clears throat> we'll do switch hitter again, just to be sure. them so we're gonna get your keycaps on here got some extra switches for you fixed even without pulling it apart just a pain in the ass but we'll handle that in a second oh no is it more than one did we overlube the whole thing and how did that happen even though we tested it on the board it's okay we will in fact work it out but we're going to test this first either way see which ones are Almost like they're too tight together. It's not like they're over lubed. Hmm. 
That's really weird. As you know, we did actually test them all. Not the easiest thing to fix, but it is fixable. It's almost like they're just actually tight. Like they're being pushed together. Yeah, like they're... So FYI, the easiest way to fix this kind of a thing, IMO, is, I mean, you can rub some of it away with um, like cotton swabs on the side of this piece of the stabilizer right here. Yeah, that's weird. It's actually almost like they're being pulled side to side on the, because this is not, well that is. Okay. Hmm. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna remove this bottom end. See if we can take a look at it. It's almost like super weird for that to have happened. off to the side so we're not scratching anything. <laughs> so the easiest way to actually get that out that I would expect Actually, you know what? That's not why they're sluggish. They're sluggish because the case is pressing against the stabilizer wire. I'm not even joking. And it's pressing against all of them. PCB mount stabilizers, yes. But I can see that the actual stabilizer wire is being pushed on hard here. Like if you look at it, that's weird. Okay, clue board. If you look right here, like look at that it pushes itself back up a little bit. So right there, That stabilizer wire is very slightly impinged by the zeal stab wire. It appears, maybe not. No, it is touching it. Oh, 
Like, is the stabilizer wire just wide enough? That's a problem. Yeah, case OP for sure. And it's happening on all of these. Like, look. I mean, I realize there are band-aids there, but it's moving more than the band-aid can compress. So it's not happening up here. It's hard to push it down. I mean, I can think of a way to solve that, but it's not awesome. And the way that I can think of to actually solve that would be for all these switches to not be pushed down quite as far so there'd be more play under the PCB. But that's like terrible. Case OP. I mean, the other way is to literally actuate it so much that the. That's going to be irritating. I mean, there is some friction added by the, or not friction, but there is some uh, force or resistance to motion, at least being added by the lube for sure. So if I remove some of it, which is a pain in the ass, by the way, but if I do it and get some of it off, I might need more Q-tips than this, but <clears throat> if I can get some of it off of there, it may actually reduce it enough, kind of gets rid of the whole point of the lube though, to damp the sound. It's possible that it'll reduce it enough so that they return in some reasonable fashion. No, there's still like, there's a lot of force required. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. <sighs> okay. Yeah, so there's like exactly one of them that might kind of work by itself where it's not that impeded and it's the enter button. No, and even it. Trying to make sure there isn't like something else funky going on, like they're like the caps are bent or something and they're pushing it up. But there is way more force required. Yay, clue board. Okay, not getting my seal of approval. I mean, like I said, I can think of ways that it would work no matter what. Because these are plate mounted here, I mean, realistically, I could desolder all this and like actually push the board down just a little bit so that it, the bottoms of these weren't fully seated. Unfortunately, that might be the actual way to handle it because of the parts that we've chosen. I have a feeling that these stab wires are thicker just enough to 
Like, here's GMK, right? So let's measure them. Because we can test this. Like, they're just barely thicker enough or something like that to cause problems. So, I'm going to zoom out. One point five nine millimeters. Let's find these zeal stab wires. No. This is a problem other people are having. One point six zero. Oh. can't imagine one thousandth clearance is what they designed into it. No. No, no indeed. Hmm. Nothing can be easy, that's okay. I understand. That's, uh, that's why you, honestly, it's why you pay somebody else to do this thing. You deal with the headache for you. I understand. I understand that's what I'm signing up for. But you're right, nothing can be easy. Everything in life. <laughs> it's probably line number one in the manual. You're probably right. Stable, no. Hmm. So, clue board requires PCB mount stabilizers. Make sure you install them before installing and soldering switches. Switches, you may use PCB mount or plate mount switches. Uh, protrusion, yeah, blah, blah, blah. No, there is no. So I know how I'm going to fix this. And it is not my favorite way, however, I think it's the only reasonable way to actually accomplish that. But, get ready, uh, TSC, get ready for the soldering gun of death, of doom, sorry, not death, no death. Let's not have death. Uh, man, you know what, that happens, right? With customs, you usually don't find it a ton. Bzz, yep, bzz, this is correct. <laughs> fact while it's not hot all the way let's empty this so we're not going to actually desolder everything well we might we might have to but i'm going to try not to so what i'm going to do is, is i'm going to desolder all the switches around all the stabilizers so here 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 and there and i'm actually going to push like pull the board back just a little bit because it doesn't need much clearance as far as I can tell it just needs a tiny little bit and that's not the best thing but these are the parts we've got it's possible that cheaper stabilizers in fact I I have some I'll I'll check them in a second like not GMK not zeal lesser stabs it's very possible don't have these same issues GMK 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 those are Alps those are CoStar I actually think these are GMK in here.
I think those are two. No, these are. Well, actually, I do think they are. But I have seen stabilizers with less thick wires. Yeah, those are 1.59 millimeter. Or 1.6, probably, if I release tension. I do have cheaper stabs somewhere else, I think. Here's some clip-in KVD fans. Clip-in. Oh, same. All right, guys. I don't know. Those got shipped to me by accident. Just clipping ones. They meant to send me not the clear ones. And not clip in for that matter. Same. Maybe one thou less. Or one hundredth of a mil. Okay, whatever. Doesn't matter. Get to work. We'll get it done. I'm not trying to take forever. Which we kind of already have done, I guess. Sorry. Okay. Is this not functioning correctly? Okay. So we're taking this apart. Oh, why did I do that? That sucked. Yeah, I didn't actually get a bunch of solder on that, but still. fingers is kind of gross.
All right. I'm going to turn my soldering iron back on and reflow those joints. That sucks. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> so basically, the like filter on the back of that thing. Yeah, so, so here's the deal. This, these being all pressed tight, like they should be, the switches bottom down, the stab wire, I mean, at first I thought it was because I lubed them, but it's not. You can tell because if you look, it pops back up. There's actually tension on this wire from the bottom of the case. So the bottom of this pe of this plate mount case, it's really hard to see right there, where the stab touches the bottom of that case, it's actually touching ever so slightly. And it's causing upward tension. on a bunch of the stabs. Actually, all of them are sluggish because they're impeded, and all of them are not that. Moving up just a tiny little bit. Not all of them, actually, just some of them are moving up a tiny little bit. But they're all real sluggish, like not lube sluggish. Although I was worried that that was the case at first. I'm reflowing these joints because the solder sucker was a little plugged. So we're gonna reflow it to get the proper amount of solder in there so we can pull the all of the solder up. Hey, that was weird. Explains why that, yeah. Anyway, um, that actually, the function wasn't wired up, which is fine, I guess. Um, because, well, we're gonna fix it now. So some of these don't want to loosen because it didn't suck all the solder up. That's okay though, we gonna get it this time. So there's something else going on with this gun, and I know exactly what it is, and it's super freaking annoying. And I do have a way of solving it. Though I thought I had. I just did. Other than replacing it, I mean. 
a layer actually came off of the messed up one. The like encrusted layer. That's awesome. Didn't even know that was a thing that would happen. Just like peeled off. So this, let's see if this works. I don't want to use up the last one that I've got right now if I don't have to, like if this works. Because I can get more, but. Oh yeah, that sounds healthy. Still a little warm. <laughs> okay. So we should be able to push down stab just a little bit There's an easy way to test this with our little shift. So the lube is definitely like adding to it. does make a difference. Still a little bit sluggish and that's lube, probably. Look.
Maybe not, though. It's not that much removed. It's just a tiny little bit. And I can verify that by now seating it back down. On all the surrounding switches. Verified. You guys see that? Down now. With it seated all the way. So there is definite interference. For anybody that was wondering. Yep. See it just push out just a little bit. That's shitty though. I mean it'll be fine because the... It'll be fine because there's a lot of space in that case if I remove that mirror thing. But that's super irritating. So, I now will no longer recommend clue board. Case, at least. I mean, not that people were like all about my recommendations or anything, but you know, it's a thing. So now we're going to desolder most of the board. Because it doesn't take that long to desolder it. And I need these to work. I really am. Like, I wanted that to work so well.
my guys, but this should never be a problem with any bird. In my opinion, it's a somewhat unacceptable interference. Okay, Let's see what we can do. Yeah, so check this out. I don't know if you can if we'll focus on that. It's really hard to see. Maybe it'll focus. You can see it's touching it, like right at the edge of the stab where the, where the plastic keeps the stabilizer in line. It's very hard to see like this, but like right there, it's touching it on both sides. Basically the plastic part of the, the, the bottom part of the stab that touches the PCB that holds the stab wire up in position is holding it up directly in contact. Pain in the butt. There we go. No, still touching it, just barely. So what I'm doing is, is pushing against the top. I don't know, honestly, I could desolder the whole thing. Would probably work and might even be faster, honestly. Um, I guess my plan kind of is to try, right, and get to where I can with it. Yeah, it's just not. There it moves. Move back. Felt it move just a little bit right there. Hopefully it was enough. And it is. That's a pain in the ass. I like it very little. <laughs> um, very, very little. That's the nicest thing I can say about this right now. Yep, this one's still stuck.
So I soldered the switch, desoldered the switches like literally all around each of the stabilizers, like one or two switches out all around. Pretty big pain, for sure. I'm pushing on the top of the actual stabilizer housing to try and push it out just a little bit. is actually out. Mm. So the right move is probably to Move some of these switches that I've loosened. It's like the opposite thing of what you normally want to do, though. Just you don't normally want to have anything to do with forcing the PCB to sit below, below the like top line of where it could reasonably be attached. Whoa. Switch top removal. Grabbed onto the top of the case. That's okay. I mean, the pins are loose on this switch location. Weird that it doesn't want to come up very easily. <laughs> okay. Let's try this some other way. I got another way. Because the clips had already been loosened. So you can see now that that is pushed out just a little bit, right? So now we have to not only check that, but we have to make sure that it'll still fit in the case so that we're not lowering it too much. And that we're not pushing the, the port too far out of alignment for it to not match up to the bottom of the case. Which I don't think will be a problem given that we're using a diffuser. But I want to make sure that the customer has the ability to remove the diffuser if he wants to. And potentially leave his thing, in, uh, the mirror ish thing in there. Yeah, I think he'll be stuck with the diffuser on from now on, if I'm looking at this correctly. Or at least the mirror out. No. He'll be stuck having to use the diffuser for sure. Sorry. Customer. This is not a controllable thing. Apparently, tolerances are lame. On this. But you do have space with this on there. Well, does it 
still go in? It does. I mean, okay, sure. We're not done yet, though. Don't do that. Set that off to the side. Since it's the top piece interfering, we don't really need that bottom piece for the moment. Honestly, this one could be better. So we're gonna remove these two. Pain, you are correct. What a pain. <laughs> Come on. Are you joking with me right now? Where did that spring just go? There it is. Stupid switch top removal. Yeah, switch top removal is kind of overrated in my opinion. Sorry guys.
Oh yeah. showing this to you. Okay, look at that wire. See how it's bent down in the middle to touch? And now there's a support like right here. Right here, it's bent right there down. Bent right there and down. Yeah, that. Oh, sure. It just makes me a little irritated at, um, well, the maker of the board. It's so exaggerated when I look at it here. From this other slightly greater angle. Yeah, you guys can't get a good view in there like I can with my eye. From where I'm sitting, it's super obvious. Actually, it's a lighting thing. Yeah, it has to do with the amount of light right there. This might work. Nah, it does not work. Camera does not work as good as my eye. Anyway. I don't think there's a way for this one to work. Honestly. Yeah, the space bar is not going to work. The more I push it out of the way, I mean, I'd have to push it a lot, a lot out of the way. Well, okay. We're just gonna desolder all of that. Sorry, guys. Hate it when builds don't go right. This is like one of those moments, though, you know, where you're looking at it and you're like, did I, like, is there something I missed? says those instructions definitely 100% say they require PCB mount stabs
Yeah, this, no, the stab. So the stab is touching the case, the top piece of the case. The stab wire, right near where the stabilizer meets up with the stab wire and the case, it's pushing down on it and it's bending the wire down. Now, where did the spring go? There it is. See which ones we can get out easy. Not that one. Yeah, this is, um, yeah, the PCB is angled to the left because I tried to push the stabilizers down. So basically what I was doing was trying to relieve the tension on it, but the space bar one is so jacked that it won't, it won't push out of the way. What I mean is, is that stabilizer is just interfering. I might be able to get it to seat low enough, but I'm gonna have to remove a lot of these switches in order to get that. 
so I'm trying to remove all of them, but of course the board is Yep. I don't know if it's actually going to sit low enough to do it, honestly. That'll do K. K is way tight. H is way tight. It's 11. Some of these last couple builds have been really long because of weird, weird inconsistencies. I guess not all of them, but a couple of them. I was completely unaware of any interference issues with any stabs, though. Yeah, basically, I'm, I just desoldered the whole board, so. There's still enough tension on it. So with these boards specifically, I guess the good rule of thumb is not to seat any of them very deeply. Yeah, so where it's where it's rubbing against is right here and right here on space. And so we can prove this. I mean, we've done it a couple times with other switches in here, right? But. If I bend this back out correctly, put this back in where it's supposed to be. All right, get my space bar. Yeah, man. Um, this one, though, 
was particularly interfering and it's real hard to get a gauge on it oh derp wait no oh, this is what we want So I think the key is now to insert it like this from the top where these are all free to do their thing. And then when I flip it over, just solder some stuff like space down real loose. Actually all of these stabilized positions realistically with as much play as possible to where they still sit in the board. We'll test each one of them. It's crazy. Crazy. There's so little of the pin sticking out comparatively. Like the PCB legs are just barely touching. In fact, I'm gonna put this corner one, these corner ones in too. Never ever have I seen okay, there's some over there. So put like one in the middle. Okay, we're gonna try that thing that I just talked about. It's gonna be super weird. Oh, this has gotta heat up actually. Sorry, fan on.
Crazy, crazy, crazy. This is where the rubber hits the road, man. Where's our other space? Actually, this space goes over here, right? No, it does not. Space does go, uh, this shift does go here. Where's the other shift? Man, F this board. Not your board, customer, just the actual board type, not the best. Apparently. Who knew though? Who actually knew that? I did not. Feel about the same, feel about the same. Same ish. Okay, we're going to test it in the case. Let me see that it actually works. With this spacer and with all the parts, then we're gonna. If it does, we solder it all back together. If it doesn't, we're gonna remove this mirror from the bottom. Yeah. Oh, it's no, it's nobody's fault here. It's totally clue boards, though. Like tolerances, yo. Pushes up just a little bit right there. I'm guessing it's this. That is going to reduce some of the upward glow, but it completely allows that to work. <laughs> Gotta try. I agree with you, man. I actually am happy that I'm having this experience as much as I'm like, come on, clue board. I'm actually happy that we're testing this out. I really want to keep that under glow if possible. I have a feeling that what's pushing up is actually...
I actually think it's that loose that loose one right there all right customer I know how to fix that I think actually the way is to cut a little tiny dimple where that where these little stabs uh, stab screws touch that mirror like literally cut a dimple in the mirror it is plastic so I'll let you think about that because if I don't do that it means taking that mirror out which will reduce some of the glow that comes back up through the board there's nothing else I can really do to pre permit or to prohibit rather prevent other issues otherwise decision is once I put this back together I'm gonna to try and dimple that mirror right there where it needs to be cut out so that you can have it in there This is the strangest build I've ever made of a board that literally just got bought from a manufacturer. And I've heard good things about Clueboard too, so it makes me wonder if a newer version. Yeah, go ahead, man. Take it easy. Sorry about it. Sorry about this taking way longer than anyone would have expected. Problems with builds. Apparently, I, I take the builds that are going to be problematic. Joking. Like you said, boop beep, nobody, uh, you just got to be, be willing to tough it out and can't really worry about it. worry about having to dig in, right? Some people do. Man, that USB port is at the bottom of that hole. I mean, I bet it works just fine. It does. That's how far down that board is, though. <laughs> I agree, actually. I think that's the most unfortunate part, because if somebody who never did this before encountered this, like, man, what would they do? Or who'd never built a board before, or barely knew how to solder, maybe? 
I mean, I don't think that's the boat the customer's necessarily in. Maybe it is. I don't know. But... But if he was, this would be a weird experience for him. Okay, we're going to put these all back in. We're going to solder it back together. Let's throw these keycaps on and it's going to be beautiful. But now I'm like all sorts of tempted to go fast and get it ready. so awkward not trying to like press the actual switches flat against the PCB. Having to resist my urge. So what's the most problematic board any of you guys have run into, build-wise? It does make me curious. If any. I mean, a lot of customs go together really well. Most do, do, most do just fine. Feels weird, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're doing a lot of customs or KBD fan stuff, which mostly just seems to go together fine, in my experience. Come on. I mean, not perfect, but mostly good. Then again, I probably do more builds than some people. Most people, maybe. I don't know. Okay, I am determined for this board to feel good and look good and behave appropriately. It's funny that somebody mentioned earlier that this is a meme build, or that it's a meme board. Clue board, I mean. 
I never really considered the mean clue board product a mean board. Like some other stuff, like what is it they had with like double numpads or something like that? Yep, yep. That's okay. I'm gonna get all these ones around the stabilized parts done. Around them stabs. I'm actually gonna like attach the case back together. Make sure everything lines up. Because I don't want to have to desolder anything again. Or everything at least. Sorry about the amount of time. Next week is a straight 60%, so I think it should be pretty straightforward. Like a DZ60 PCB. I think it should be not too bad. Yeah, knock on wood, for sure. Before we get too far, we're actually going to screw this thing together real quick because I want to make sure that under tension, this is the only guy that's having a problem. I should expect this one. Ooh. 
Actually, under tension, it's fine. Good. We're good. I'm happy. I'll take it. Soldering the rest together now. I know, man. Seriously. Have you been watching this? It's undone? Have you been seeing? Clue board, man. Things to know about clue board. You know, the sad thing is I actually wiped some of the um, lube off of the side of the off stream. I'll actually add a little bit more back to where it was. Off the side of the stabilizer plungers as they came up. I wiped some off, thinking at first that that's what it was. But now that we've verified, that's not in fact what it was. I'll smear a little bit more on there after the stream to make it well lubed. I mean, it's still pretty lubed. But. <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay, so feel free to watch the VOD, but the case on the um, clue board, now I had to desolder it all, so the case on the clue board, the top part, so where the plate is, actually interferes with the stabilizer wires. If you have the the switches, like the PCB um, mount legs, pushed all the way down and seated properly, at least on this one, the top case interferes with it. So I had to desolder it, resolder it, so that they weren't, none of the switches are seated well so that the depth of them is so that the pins are just barely, barely poking out the back side of this PCB. It's crazy. Like, they're just barely poking out. But now, all the stabilizers actually actuate just fine. There's segments in the video. I'll try and go back through and clip them when I see them so that I can send them clue board and be like, hey guys, uh, I don't know if you knew about this, but I looked at the instructions. It's like the only board ever that comes with instructions. And uh, maybe they should put those in the instructions because they're not in there. I don't know if this is like a V4 thing, like the or V3, V4 thing, like whatever version this clue board is. I've never heard of this problem before but I've never actually built a clue board before. It's okay. It's, it's gonna be made right now. I mean, it is being made right, right now. We just strapped it together and verified that it worked after some of the switches were soldered back in place. Boom. All the ones around the stabilizers, at least. It's freaking crazy, man. I wish I knew that before I started. Okay, man, I've been getting the tough ones, I guess, a little bit lately. Whatever, if I learned the lesson and somebody else gets to take advantage of the fact that I did, that's okay. That is not in the correct hole. Yeah. 
Hopefully I caught that. Yep, yep. Feels bad, man. Switch hitter. Guessing this isn't soldered in. A couple of them are. that wasn't working. Well, I can't tell you why quote is not working. Maybe I didn't hit it because it's on there. Yeah, okay. I just didn't hit that one. Cool. Okay. Now, back to where we were like an hour and a half ago. I can remember in a long time. It's like when I did the the eagle and the um It's like when I did the eagle and the, what's it called? This is the step to the, that's right, there's two steps on this. I guess I should have probably left the normal there because it stabilized a little better. I forgot that there was a both in, in this. Anyway. It's like when I did the, the, um, I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, the legend, the unicorn legend and the eagle. It's like, yeah, I'll just replace these couple switches. And it was like, no, nope, whole board. Yeah, it's, those are like the only two truly rough builds I've had where it's like, oh, unexpected things. The, the unicorn, I expected there to be PCB problems, and there was earlier, I think. Did I stream that part? I don't think I streamed that part. No, I did. But then the eagle, I had to, like, do over again. 
because there was some other issues. That's okay though. It's all of that worked out well. I mean, I'm not going to give up and fail to complete a customer's build. Like I want their builds to go well. I'm not going to give up on you guys and take it off offline for the most part. No, that's not what I want right there. That was done. Where is tab? XDA are pretty NGL, but you don't like it. Yeah, they are. They are actually really cool, but I understand not liking XDA. It happens. I'm not a huge fan, but I don't dislike them at all. I, I think for the price, they're, they're actually pretty good. Um, like I said before, I totally get the... You just don't like them. XDA has a really flat top to it, so if the customer had been like, no, 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 what I want is SA or something like that, I'd have been like, okay, so this is the furthest thing from what you want. I have a board with these on it, so I know they're not crap, but I do understand. I actually kind of wish they made this keycap set in not XDA also though but I think some people like they want to just have a keycap set to throw on a board so that they can you know figure it out later what they're gonna do like so this is this fits the bill where it's not very expensive it has legends that allow you to like have a function layer. Unfortunately, there are some legends on this one that he doesn't really need because he has arrow keys. So he's going to get these left, right, up, down arrow legends. Yeah, not expensive. Looks good. Precisely. Not expensive, looks good, um, isn't the best feeling if you don't like flat profiles. Do you? I, I have a question though actually, if you don't like uh, XDA, what do you feel about DSA, right? I have a feeling that people who like DSA are more likely to like XDA than people who like more traditionally sculpted, more traditional keycaps I guess or even like more exaggerated ones like SA. Where are my page up, page down, there they are. Yeah, and with this colorway, these keycaps look kind of nice, I think. They're not very high pro. <laughs> it's not very high profile. I mean, it does barely just barely cover them because, of, or barely, they just come right at level. Oh, 
on the bottom you can see more light spilling out. Anyway, yeah, so we'll take it over to the other uh, station and we'll get this thing going. Let me switch the mic. Alright guys, so we'll hear these sounds now, um, I'm going to get us some 10 fast fingers I guess. We'll do a typing test real quick. Okay. Oof, the angle is not very steep. Okay. Oh my god. That was bad. That was real bad. Yeah, I'm having a hard time typing on these flats, and there's no um, home home indicators, so <laughs> I'm like, uh, 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 I'm off. It's kind of wild. It's pretty tactile. I mean, there's Zelio 62 gram V2s. Um, I guess we could try and do another typing test. Nah. Oh, hold on. Let me pause this. Redo, redo, redo. Okay. Still bad. It's really hard for me to type on these actually. Um, having a pretty difficult time with the flat and the like n not very pitched angle. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, um, I mean, it works. And so here, now the stabilizers work. So we can hold on. Okay, so here.
pretty tactile. I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Yeah, the stabs are good actually. Um, I did wipe some of the lube off of these when I thought maybe they were over lubed. Off of this one, I think, and this one. It doesn't matter. I'll redress them. I'll pull those off and just make sure that I've got the sides. But I didn't pull a lot out. I mean, it was really just off the sides of the plunger as it came up. Um, it still lubed pretty well. But... I don't know. Sounds good. So I'm really sorry that that took effing forever because, well... Apparently, clue boards uh, don't seat those switches all the way because the stab wires will get bound. Anyway, thank you guys for everybody who's still here or who watches the VOD this long. It's got to be like six hours. So without further ado, or almost six, I don't know. Yeah, um, you're very welcome, Boopy Bub. Thank you for always coming back. Tefram, thank you too. It's undone. Literally, all of you guys, thank you so much. Um, yeah, you guys have a great night, and uh, I'll see you guys next Wednesday where we do a 60% into a text case. Um, I'll throw in some other stuff, but we'll see how it goes. Take it easy. Bye.